it is 6.30 and I will call this uh, Burnsville Council work session to order. And uh, our work sessions for everyone that's here are very informal. And so what we're going to do, so everybody knows who's around the table and who's in the audience, um, we'll go around the table. I'm Elizabeth Kautz. I'm the mayor of the city of Burnsville. Suzanne Wynn, council member. Dan Keeley, council member. Heather Johnston, city manager. Terry Schultz, Director of Parks and Recreation. J.J. Ryan, Recreation Department. Jenny Faulkner, Community Development Director. Steve Albrecht, Public Works Director. Will Hoffman, City Council. Mary Sherry, City Council. Michelle Collins, City Clerk. And we'll go. Scott Peterson, YMCA. Thomas Chairman, YMCA. Steve Milbank, YMCA. Mark Yvonne. Just a part of a team, part of a Burnsville softball team. Okay. Sarah Yvonne Singh, Kim Adam, softball team. Mike Ellen's Burnsville umpires. Mark Allenbach, Burnsville umpire. Troy Mickelson, Minnesota Recreation Parks Association, Minnesota U Triple State State Director for the School of Softball. Okay, very good. Softball here and also umpire. Okay. I'm Rick Brennan. I'm the chair of the Burnsville Softball Council. Paul Milton, Burnsville Softball Council. Jason Barta, Burnsville Softball Council. Terry Voter, Burnsville Softball. Welcome, everybody. Uh, the first item is for most of you who are here, and this is the discussion of the letters of interest uh, received for the uh, administration of the city's adult athletic league. And presenting is uh, Mr. J.J. Ryan, our Recreations and Facilities Superintendent, and Terry Schultz, our Director of Recreation and Natural Resources, Parks, Recreation and Natural Resources. J.J. Good evening, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Uh, yes, this is follow-up to our previous discussion on adult athletics and the letter of interest that went out. Uh, those in attendance tonight are here. We did send out a public meeting notice to uh, 17 potential uh, league directors. We sent out the meeting notice to our current uh, team managers as well as our softball council. So that's why so many of them are here tonight. Uh, a few of them could not attend, but they did send, send. Yep. emails that we, we were not able to get into your packet. They came after your packets were out. Uh, those three emails were sitting on your tables in front of you tonight. So uh, you have that information. Um, there's also some additional information um, immediately following our October meeting, our October work session. Some yes. emails were received and some correspondence happened. Uh, for all those interested, those emails are uh, on file with the city clerk's office. So, uh, again, thank you for having me here tonight. Um, just take a minute to bring everybody up to speed on this item. And uh, this started uh, back in January 2015 as a discussion at your all-day work session. Uh, we then went to October uh, 2015 uh, as part of a bigger picture role of recreation. Uh, but from that meeting, um, we were asked to explore more options for the administration of our adult athletic leagues uh, through a request uh, for letters of interest. Uh, in February, we sent out that request to, as I said, 17 potential league directors from the area. And on March 4, 2016, we received three potential mm -hmm. responses. Um, again, the purpose of that uh, letter of interest was to explore options for outside league management. And uh, really, we wanted to gauge the interest of, of the other league directors in the area and, and, and take a look at the qualifications of those candidates. Uh, we also wanted to take a look at the financial benefit, uh, or if there was a financial benefit to the city. And we prepared a uh, financial benefit exercise for them to complete so that it would give us a better uh, apples to apples comparison uh, when you look at leagues side by side. Uh, the letter of interest requirements uh, had a few different parts to it. Our proposed scope of services. Uh, not moving this ahead. Yeah, there you go. Sorry about that. Uh, our proposed scope of services. Uh, we wanted to know uh, if they were capable of administering all of our leagues, softball, sand, volleyball, and broomball. Uh, we wanted to know how they would respond to our participants after hours, weekends, things like that. Uh, we, wanted to, we wanted them to describe uh, for us the role of a softball council and how they would uh, bring them into the fold and let them be part of the process. 
uh, and we wanted to know, uh, we want to know a little bit more about their plan for how they would uh, continue the ongoing success of our adult athletic leagues. We also asked for qualifications of the proposers and anybody that may be involved in administering the adult athletic leagues. And uh, we asked them to provide a resume and just a brief description. And just as a housekeeping piece, we asked them to identify any conflicts of interest or add any additional information they might have as it relates to their administration of the leagues. Uh, the other piece to the letter of interest was the financial benefit exercise that I mentioned. And in order to complete that exercise, uh, we provided them some budget detail about the operating and administrative fees so that the respondents would have a feel for what it takes to administer leagues um, as the same size of the city of Burnsville was doing in 2015. Uh, we asked them to uh, consider all operating fees as fixed cost and focus just on administrative fees. Uh, we felt this was the area that really they could change uh, and move things around and, and still provide us the apples to apples comparison that we were looking for. Uh, it's important to note here that if we do move forward, if we do go to an RFP, obviously anybody responding to that RFP would have the opportunity to put in their own numbers in all of these areas. But for the sake of this exercise, we just narrowed it down to administrative fees. Um, and it's also important to note that our current operating expenses, we work a lot with our softball council and team managers to set some of those costs and to identify the things they want to see happen in their league, such as umpires, sanctioning, and uh, awards and team appreciation nights. So some of those are just passed through costs, and our softball council would be involved in assisting them in setting those fees. On the screen in front of you is the financial benefits exercise that we asked uh, our respondents to fill out. Uh, so you can see the top line there is just the their proposed administrative fees. We wanted to know how much uh, they would call, or they would charge to administer the leagues. If you follow that number down, uh, you see the 57,522. That's the number that uh, we've used as the city's administrative fees and the $12,000 as revenue. So if you take the number that they are proposing as administrative fees and put that underneath the 57522, you come out to a number that would leave us with excess revenues to be paid to the city. This is how we determine whether or not there would be a financial benefit or what the financial benefit would be to the city. Uh, as I said in your background, there were three responses uh, that were received uh, from the letter of interest. Metro Baseball League, Minnesota Valley YMCA, and the Minnesota Sports Federation. Uh, two of those folks are here tonight. The third one was not able to join us. He sent me an email late, so he sends his uh, apologies, but he was unable to attend. Uh, through our review, uh, it appears that all of them meet the requirements as outlined in the letter of interest uh, to administer adult athletic leagues. And based on their responses uh, in the financial benefit exercise, it appears that there would be a minimum, uh, minimal impact to the overall recreation budget if we proceed with uh, one of them as our league director. Um, and again, the financial benefit exercise was, was just that. It was just an exercise. Uh, however, as I stated in the background, uh, the details of that financial benefits section um, was not for public information. We did not want any contractors that took the time to complete the letter of interest to be at a uh, competitive disadvantage if we move forward to a formal RFP process. So that's why we are withholding those those numbers here. Uh, but as I understand, council members, you've been briefed on the uh, content of those letters of interest uh, that we did receive from these three candidates. So, uh, Next piece I'd like to talk to uh, you about is the adult athletic program staff. We have uh, Four full three full-time people that are involved in the administration of our adult athletic leagues. The uh, first person on the list there is uh, Recreation Facilities Manager, and we've identified that he spends about a third of his time working on adult athletic leagues. Uh, it's important to note that uh, other portions of his time are dedicated to our, our facilities department and uh, the number of issues and concerns we have happening around our, our building, around our city right now as it relates to our facilities thing facilities issues. Uh, our administrative assistant spends 25% of her time on uh, adult athletics and uh, the rest of the time she's involved in 
scheduling park facilities uh, and anything else we might have in the recreation area. So she's very involved in everything that we do. Um, the recreation supervisor uh, that we have involved here, uh, while she does administer or does serve as the league director for some of our smaller leagues like the sand volleyball program, uh, she is more involved in scheduling of athletic fields and working between the league director and our maintenance folks to make sure we have everything in place uh, for all the games that happen each and every night and every, each and every weekend. Uh, so it's important to note here that uh, in the event that um, the administration of our adult athletic leagues is taken up by another contractor, a large portion of this time, of this person's time, is still needed to mm -hmm. coordinate mm -hmm. field scheduling purposes. And we've identified about $10,000 uh, as, as a number to, to use moving forward um, if, if that person, if we do go down the road of a, of a contracted service. Would that also mean the administrative assistant will also continue on? Uh, Madam Mayor, members of council, we have not uh, gone down the road of how we would reallocate time or uh, what well, because the function of the administrative assistant at this time, as you indicated. Um, at this time, Madam Mayor, um, the, the function of the administrative assistant is just for the city. The administrative assistant would okay. not lend her okay. services to whomever a okay. new league director might be, if, that's, if I'm answering that question correctly. Yeah, I'm, I'm, because a lot of the, the facilities are ours. Correct. So the recreation supervisor will continue to to execute those, those functions. That is correct. Okay. And uh, our intern is listed up there. Uh, obviously, that that is a position that they're they're involved uh, each summer. It depends on their their interest in adult athletics or youth and family programs or senior services. Um, so we would like to continue on with a recreation intern. Um, and we would just modify what their roles or responsibilities are if we move forward or how we move forward. So. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Council, uh, staff did uh, receive emails from uh, a few folks back in October. Those, those emails are uh, on file with the city clerk. And uh, it's my understanding that there are a few folks that, that came tonight in, in hopes of having an opportunity to share speak. their thoughts mm -hmm. on the adult athletic program, okay. but I'll stand for any questions. Okay, thank you. JJ, questions for JJ? Dan. Uh, thank you, JJ. Um, knowing the origin of this idea, I felt like, uh, especially since we had a, uh, a few more visitors to this meeting than the past one, is to uh, um, give everyone a little perspective and then I have a question about some of your numbers. Um, <clears throat> We fully understand as council members that, that we're asking staff, um, you know, department within our staff to evaluate uh, outsourcing part of what it does. That's not an easy request. Not even in the private sector do you find situations where um, a leadership group would go to a department and say, evaluate outsourcing what you do and, and bring us a full report. So this is not, this is an awkward and uncomfortable thing to go through. Um, but we appreciate it. We are not beholding to shareholders. We're beholding to the taxpayers who are our shareholders. And, and so government has to be a little more transparent than the private sector uh, on things like this. Uh, and, and so it necessitates this type of process. But thank you for doing the diligent work and, and bringing um, these, the, these things forward for us. Um, this also, just for the benefit of the uh, people viewing, I don't know what side of the fence you're on per se, and I'm not going to guess at it, but um, this is not too dissimilar to a process that we went through now seems like ancient history about five years ago uh, when we took a look at our youth uh, programs basically programs that the city was putting on at the youth garage and I remember the very first meeting that we had similar to this and this uh, council chamber was packed with about 75 kids wearing a t-shirt with um, a garage logo. I think it was a bright green. It was a very bright or bright orange. And uh, they were upset that we were even having a discussion about what's the best long-term secure future for the garage. Um, and uh, it took a long time to get through that process, but what came out of it 
by going through that process and, and it took courage for that was again another request for staff to look at essentially potentially outsourcing something that they did and they took a lot of pride in and I let you and Garrett and the rest of the group and Terry take a lot of pride in this adult athletics. Um, what that ended up uh, producing was obviously the uh, the new uh, Burnsville Youth Collaborative and the YMCA and the school district and others getting involved and providing a better more sustainable long-term program for after-school programming and then for the the music portion something that came out of the blue and that's uh, a new nonprofit was uh, created and, and so both of those programs continued um, outside of the city's uh, program over uh, overview and, and it's basically in the hands of experts and that's really what we were hoping for. So in this case, um, when I brought up the idea for us to look at our adult athletics program, I really just looked at my own core philosophy of government um, and I've never been secretive about this and I think there's a few that Council that share this, I don't believe that city governments or state governments or federal governments should be involved in things that the private sector can provide. And so when I went and looked and found out that there were lots of private sector providers that put on uh, softball and other athletic programs, it begged the question, should we look at ours? And using that youth programming model, um, the idea was floated and I thank my council members for supporting uh, the idea to proceed and get us to this point. So we at least have an open and transparent conversation about it and look at all aspects of it so we can decide is this the best thing or is it best for the city of Burnsville to continue to provide this versus one of these outside provi private providers. And um, I, I have to say I was a little astonished at how many providers there were. I had no idea. I didn't, I didn't have this master plan and do all this research. Um, I just felt I had a principled decision and a principled idea that I wanted to explore. So now we're uh, now we're taking a deeper look at it, and we've been you've shared some nice numbers with us. And the one question I have on the slide um, is the administrative overhead. If you could uh, pull that up on the uh, overview. Uh, are you looking for this? That one. Okay. <clears throat> um, when I looked at this, and, and I'm, I'm not the smartest guy on the block, um, but I work with numbers a lot, and so I started looking at it going, okay, it seemed to me that um, we had some significant overhead, and it's 0.88 full-time equivalents, uh, full-time equivalent, and the overhead of a city employee, supervisor level, or whatever, admin, um, would be such that it uh, all of that overhead, all of that administrative overhead, would, would likely be a little different than uh, that of a private sector provider. So when I looked at that number and I saw the administrative expense being 45000 for a .88 uh, full-time uh, full equivalent, even though that FTE was made up of a multitude of people, fairly high level, and then all the way down to part-time intern, which would probably have a fairly low uh, cost. Um, it seemed low to me, though, the 45 with a 0.88. So can you elaborate without elaborating too, in too much detail because I don't want to get into uh, the minutia of wages. That's not the point of this. But um, what makes up that 45? Like, who are the people that, that are behind the, the, the titles in the background? Uh, certainly. Uh, so Councilmember Keeley, and, and again, um, this goes back a little bit to our uh, discussion back in October. And when we tried to identify to try to come up with what our costs are associated with each of the program areas, and in this particular case, adult athletics, um, we, we really had to take a look at if we had any documentation on how much time is spent in any one given area. And so we used some information from HR where we've done some, some studies in the past where we've identified uh, whether it be 0.33 or 0.25 percent of a person's time is allocated towards a specific area. And so that's how we used some of the information. That's how we gathered some of that. Um, with others, we simply tried to identify how much, how many hours a person was working in that given area. So for example, our administrative assistant, um, who's very heavily involved with the registration process of adult softball right now, um, spends a lot of her time um, in February, March, and April 
dealing with softball, given that's the biggest program. Sure. But once the program is up and running, she has a lot less to do with Absolutely. the details of it. It's feast and famine. And so yeah. we've, we've looked at, tried to add up, tried to count her number of hours, and come to that conclusion that it's 0.25% of her time. Um, we do not have a payroll system or a timesheet system that allows us to, or that we track our hours throughout the day on each project that we're working on. So some of that is best estimate to answer your question. Okay. So. Um, who is the, um, in the um, background, uh, if you want to go to the slide, if you could go back to the slide that had the parsing of each person. There you go. Sure. So who is the recreation and facilities manager that's involved in that particular number? Uh, Garrett Beck is our league director and recreation okay. so and he, facilities manager. Uh, roughly a third of his time roughly is a third spent of his in time. all of the adult recreation stuff. That is correct. And then he has an assistant. And then who's the recreation supervisor? Uh, Kelly Hansen is our recreation okay. supervisor. Uh, you know, and, I didn't go through the employee manual and, and, and org chart to figure out who these people were, so I appreciate Fair that. Enough. I just didn't, didn't know who they were. Kelly Hansen is our recreation supervisor, and, and her primary area of focus really is youth and family programs mm -hmm. uh, during the summer months and then the skating rinks during the, during the winter months as well. So, gotcha. Um, as, again, as it relates to adult athletics, she is our sand volleyball league ad administrator uh, or league director. Uh, but a, a large portion of her time is spent in the spring uh, working with the folks to schedule fields and working with our maintenance to make sure that those fields are ready to go each and every night. Gotcha. Um, and that includes more than just the adult athletic programs. Uh, that includes the, the youth programs, the BAC, VAA programs, and those people that are coming in on the weekends and things like that. So. Sure. So to tie this out then, the .88, with it, which is a composite of these four people, um, equates to a 45,000, roughly, best estimate of, of administrative cost overhead that's tied to the labor. The, uh, while the .88 uh, is, the, is the, these four positions added together, the 45,000 is the combination of the recreation and facilities manager and the administrative assistant. We backed out the recreation supervisor out of mm -hmm. uh, this slide here, yeah. uh, because that is not going to be a number that any future league director will have an opportunity to change. Gotcha. Nor will they have the opportunity to change the recreation interest. Sure. That's, I believe, the number in the background was ten thousand. Correct. That would have to. That would be an ongoing city cost mm -hmm. because there's still a city role That's in working with an outside provider and organizing fields and scheduling and whatnot. That is correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the the four, I don't know what that other person was, but it's maybe 0.7 or something like that is where that 45. And just one last question, is that number salary only? Best estimate, I understand it's best estimate, or does that also include all all in, you know, all the cost of that employee, meaning benefits and everything else, as an estimate? You know, that, that $10,000 included, um, again, it was a, a percentage number that, mm -hmm. that we grabbed just to make sure that we were hitting, you know, getting close to a mark. Yep. Um, so if we wanted to really drill down the number of hours and the benefits associated with that position, we'd have to work with HR a little more closely. It's actually not so the 10, but the it's 45. Pretty close. The oh, 45. and the 45? Yeah. Same. Is, is same that, we, we used a percentage for benefits. It's probably a little bit low, but uh, as I found out after the fact, but uh, it, it was, um, it's, a, it's a pretty good estimate. It's a pretty good number. Okay. Thank you. Okay, very good. Any other questions for JJ? All right, there are folks who want to speak this evening. And so the ones who signed up, I'm going to go first. Uh, Steve Novak? Are you, uh, or, or Thomas? Thomas? So, Scott, do you want to? Looks like you're getting drafted. <laughs> yeah. Since you're the boss, do you want to speak? <laughs> I mean, because if not, uh, I think a lot of the folks around here also want to speak, but uh, you're one of the uh, proposers, so. To listen? Okay. Okay. So, um, anyone else who wants to speak to this issue? Yes, please come and give us your name you. and address for the record. Gotcha. My name is Jason Barta. Um, address, like street address? Yes, 13027 <laughs> Penn Avenue South, <laughs> Burnsville, Minnesota. 
Um, I'm here on behalf, um, council members, of uh, the Burnsville Softball Council, um, mm -hmm. which currently works in conjunction with the city of Burnsville mm -hmm. to operate the adult softball mm -hmm. leagues. I just wrote a little thing. The Burnsville Softball Council has worked hard with the city of Burnsville and its staff for 20 plus years to uh, create and maintain the best softball league in the state. Um, every year at the end of the year, the Softball Council sends out a survey to solicit information from the paid participants on how their league could be run better and or you know maintained better. And the participants have responded positively and are happy with how the softball league is run and are happy with who runs it. The participants have not solicited change to this program. Okay. So it'll be quick and sweet. So in conclusion, we ask that the council consider the continuation of this successful partnership and we are willing to address any concerns it may have. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Barter? And I really thank you yes, because thank you. Uh, we received so many um, in November. Gotcha. Yeah. When it was a October <laughs> meeting, and then right yes, after the yes. meeting, and everybody saw it on TV. So, sure. uh, have all of your. Uh, uh, I filed all of the emails I received. So, and I'm sure my my colleagues did the same. So, but uh, thank you. Uh, very nice letter that uh, you wrote and, Very good. and really uh, outlining um, why you think it should continue to stay with the city. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I'm yeah. going to go to uh, Council Member Keely, uh, Keely and then to Coughlin. Okay. Did oh, you I'm sorry. You, yes, I'm sorry. I thought you pointed that way. Well, you, I, said, I, yeah, you had your hand up at first and then I saw Bill, but <laughs> peripheral vision. Yes, I saw yeah, it. Yes. So. <laughs> uh, just wanted to point out, I, I meant to say this in my in my opening comments. Uh, thanks, Jason, for, for all your participation. I'm sure you're volunteering a lot of hours. Um, this is one of those situations where we actually don't have a, a broken tire or, or, you know, a flat tire in, in a program. The program is absolutely successful, well run, uh, healthy, um, you know, vibrant. We have, we found out the number one rated ball fields in, in Lac Levon in the state and and uh, hopefully with the investments we're about to make we're going to attract a lot more uh, tournaments and, and make it even bigger and better. Um, this does, so I, I, it's not about, hey, I think our staff is not doing a good job, we should change. This is um, uh, a philosophical question of should the city be in the business of something that the private sector has a the selection of providers that do exactly the same thing. It's totally about who should be providing it, not, hey, we're not really doing a good job and we're looking for somebody better. Yes. We are, we're doing a good job of it, and I, and I know we are, and I've heard all the uh, comments, and, uh, you know, I've, I've played in some leagues years ago uh, until I threw my shoulder out and couldn't throw a softball anymore. Um, I, I love playing it, and I, I miss playing it. And um, so hats off to, to Garrett and JJ and the rest. Not a question of quality and deliver service, they're doing a fantastic job. They have some big shoes to fill. I, I think we're looking at, and I know we're looking at this because is this really what the city should be involved in? And I said this at the October meeting, I know I'm challenging the status quo. Just watch a park and rec TV show. I mean, this is provided in most cases or many cases by a lot of cities, but actually there's a ton of cities that don't provide it and they use outside providers. Uh, because they may not be large enough or or have this sort of department within their their uh, their city and so they rely on a private sector provider to run their softball or athletic programs um, so no question of quality and and not surprised to hear that your survey has returned outstanding uh, program quality and no reason to change uh, we definitely heard that loud and clear thank you so thank you can i ask one question of you, you bet. is this a cost saving effort um, part of it part of it there's part of it. Um, and, and and just to be very transparent about it I I look at things from the eyes of a business owner sure. uh, for a couple of decades and and I work for someone else and I deal with uh, P&L statements and and managing it and um, um, there is I believe some cost savings and part of that is just inherent in what is the cost overhead in other words your labor and cost of doing business for uh, one of the private sector providers that are that that are, have offered up their services today 
compared to the cost of city government. Sure. And that's government employees. That's kind of it has a different set of cost drivers and, and overhead. And so I think there is some savings in there. Um, and then secondly, as I point out, it's it's just a philosophical thing, and it's it's like I I don't personally, and this is what I campaigned on and how I got elected, because I didn't make any bones about it. Um, who should really be providing uh, certain services? You know, there's a lot of things we do as a city that no one in the private sector would do. There's a PAC today in Burnsville because a private provider would not step up and build one. Um, you know, streets, water, you know, we're into clean and safe and parks and amenities and, and you know, quality of life things like Lock Levon Park. But when it comes to then the social programming part, that's where I think if no one was providing it and there wasn't a profitable model out there, we'd be doing it. But if there is, in this case, there's a lot of them, then I, I ask the question, should we be in that business? That's really how we got here. Okay. okay. Bill. Um, <clears throat> I'd also like to make a statement uh, for me at the outset the garage you know uh, before I address the you know my question about softball and who should run it the garage I believe uh, was totally something uh, and I was always clear about that that the city never should have been in uh, that was that would be my philosophy now it's done a lot of good things and I don't speak for the council it's just my philosophy and uh, I'm glad that the garage ended up the way it did uh, it, it's something I felt strongly about uh, uh, the garage actually sort of wandered into some uh, counseling social programs uh, cities uh, uh, at our level should not provide that sort of service in my view um, the softball issue is a little uh, different issue. Recreation for me is a little different issue. Uh, um, uh, I appreciated Council Member Keeley bringing this issue up. I think it should be explored. And so let, let's just assume, and I'd like each of you to address this for my benefit, because I have not made up my mind about this one way or the other. Uh, each of you address that if, if it was just revenue neutral, um, what concern would you have personally as a softball person that if a private entity stepped up because uh, again private entities entities if they don't do a job are accountable uh, by contract and otherwise so I, again it's not uh, along the lines of Dan's uh, statement it's not about whether something's not being well done yet I'm just more curious about what your personal concern would be uh, if a private uh, entity uh, did this as against government, other than you're used to it and the government does a good job doing it. Um, I guess I would be concerned as to the new private entity coming in and not being in touch with what's been established over the course of 20 plus years within the city of Burnsville and its softball program run in coordination with the Burnsville Softball Council and the city of Burnsville and its staff. Which would, in turn, possibly turn into other things. I do not know what they would be, but you know, uh, drop in participation, teams possibly moving to other leagues. I have no idea. I, I I'm just speculating on that. I have no idea what would happen. Valid concern. Just okay. I'm, I'm going to go to Mary. Well, Bill brought it up, but I had written down that that I wanted to raise this point because Dan, I I really agree with you and I appreciate the hard work you did on that the youth program uh, with the youth program when we had addressed that I had two big concerns first of all was the social counseling and things that our staff was doing that I was very uncomfortable with I thought that we were we were uh, uh, taking a big risk with doing that we and I'm glad we got out of that I think that is now in the hands of people who are more competent in that area. The other thing that I'd like to point out about the garage program is that it was broken. We had so few kids coming. And again, the, the, the end result was it's in now with the, the council, the consortium. It, it is attracting kids and drawing kids, more kids in. So that's been hugely successful. Did it save some money in the, in the end? Probably, yes. Uh, what I am not sure about here is that, that 
and but I was willing to look at this. But when I looked at the background, it seems to me, and I don't know what the numbers are going to come in at, but uh, if only one of the three respondents said that they could provide an increase in revenues, I'm thinking, what's the point? And it seems like it wouldn't be that much if they could do an increase in revenues. So this leads to my, my question that probably is for both of you and maybe for some of the other people in this room, and that is, what might be the trade-off of unintended consequences for such a small savings? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if there's a question you wanted from Mr. Barta. For, and, and for, Mr. Ryan. For, J, for JJ? Yeah. And anybody else in this room that would like to ask that? What are the unintended consequences? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. So let me just go to, uh, oh, and then we'll, we'll have you come to the table, but I'm going to come to the table because, you, you know, the people who are watching us need to hear you. And we no, just pull up a chair from right. over there so that you can be at the table and there are microphones. Uh, so you, you have a, uh, give us your name and address, please. Uh, Kim Adama. I did send in an email last November. Yes. Uh, I, I, I work I, in Burnsville and live in Savage. So I don't know which address you want. <laughs> your home address. 5790 West 139th Street, Savage. Okay. Uh, one, I think of having a new director outside. I think um, you'll find a loss of teams, an already established league. I've played in Burnsville, Bloomington, Eden Prairie, Minneapolis, and several other, and Burnsville's by far the best run. And why would you fix some one that's not broke? And two, if it's growing, good chance it will not be growing once you bring in a new director. That that's an automatic. And I'm a business owner. I know what expenses are. I own two. I'm well aware of what revenues. I just don't see the point of going after something that's going to make very minimal benefit to the city on a whole for revenue. Okay. And I don't know what the costs are, but. Maybe a buck a person if it's sixty, seventy thousand a year. I mean, on a whole. Okay, that's good. Thank you. I'm going to go to Suzanne first, and then I'll come back to you, Bill. Well, um, thank you very much for yep. coming in, and everybody who came in tonight. Um, I just wanted to say that um, I had the same question as Mary did, and, and that's the unintended consequences mm -hmm. of this, and and the the savings. <laughs> Versus, you know, and I don't know, maybe um, JJ maybe can answer this too, but it seems that we're, the city would still need to be involved. And so if you have an, another party also involved, I, I can see some, some problems maybe arising because of that and maybe making it a little more difficult for staff in some instances to coordinate. It, would that be something that might be true? Council Member Wynn, uh, Madam Mayor, members of Council, uh, certainly as it's set up today, Garrett Beck and Kelly Hansen are in the same office. They obviously can work very well together, uh, talk over the cue wall if they've got questions or concerns about field scheduling, things like that. Um, and so in that regard, it is very easy having those people in the same office. Uh, however, I will say that we've worked with a number of independent league directors in the past, and we've managed to make do working with them, scheduling fields and making sure their, their maintenance needs are met. So, Okay. Terry. Madam Mayor, Council Members, is my opinion on potentially some unintended consequences um, is, you know, if we, the contractor may come in and have a wonderful job, league administration, uh, and do the same good job that we're doing, the other uh, model that I'm seeing to save cost on the private side is to uh, pay the employees less, rely more heavily on interns mm -hmm. um, and part-time staff to get the work done. And they may be great, but you're going to have some turnover in staff. So the other possibility is that the continuity in terms mm -hmm. of the quality of the administration uh, may not may not always be as high as you would like, and that will drive complaints to mm -hmm. all of you and city staff. And mm -hmm. if you were here when we had independents, we had independent directors that did a wonderful job 
mm -hmm. and some that we got complaints about. Yeah, I remember that, and I don't know if I was going to ask Mr. Barter if he remembered when we had independent um, folks, and that's why we... I started playing in 1988, so if you had independent folks, I was yeah. unaware of them. Yeah. 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 Since 2000. Okay, yeah. Okay. Dan, you had a question then? Uh, just, um, not yet. Okay. Sorry. All right. Thank you, Mr. Barter. Thank, Thank you, you uh, Thank you. Kim. Uh, I, others who want to speak. Please come forward. Give us your name and address for the record. Hi, Madam Mayor and Council. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, I'm Rick Brennan, um, Burnsville grad, and lived here for many years, but I don't now. I'm in Bloomington, uh, 8924 Colfax Avenue South. So I've been on the Council for it's hard to say, but I think about 25 years. Um, we're, our purpose, we were drawn together to address quality issues. And so we've always had the same charter, and that is to improve the softball experience. That's been our only goal. Um, we partner with the city financially. Any revenue that we've had the city has been very generous to partner with us and help us improve the facilities. And so our concern with this would be that while our goal has only been quality related, will that concern for quality of the experience continue on? Mm -hmm. And that's a good question. And I think for me, that's what I want to make sure is that the experience that our people and our players have continue that high quality, uh, not only with the experience, but also with the way the collaboration between partners and how the fields are handled and so forth. So, okay. Any questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank Great very mission. Much. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else? Yes, please. Hi. Hi. Um, name and where I live? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> name and address, uh, please. Uh, Sarah Yvonne, 15333 Greenhaven Lane, Burnsville, Minnesota. Yeah. Um, I just have a couple super quick points. Normally, um, I want to be clear, like normally I vote in the direction of the perspective of, you know, the private sector managing things and less government managing everything because it typically saves taxpayers money and promotes business, right? So normally I vote with that perspective. Um, in this case, uh, I've participated in a lot of softball leagues all over this state and other states. And this really isn't a matter of something that isn't broken. I would say it's more of a matter of something that's like best in class. I've never been in a league or even just played in a city where it is as well organized and put together and as friendly as all the guys that work um, are. So I guess I would just ask that, you know, we put a really thorough business case together before we would make a big change. That would be my vote if I had one. Best in class, quality and, uh, of the uh, fields, and then the experience. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> okay. Dan. Well, I, I share your sentiment and that of the other gentleman. Um, I can assure you that government does not move fast and that we are going to thoroughly vet this six ways to Sunday and back again uh, before we were to make a final decision. And so the three parties who have expressed a, a letter of interest, we're just at the first step. We need to have another discussion. We need to have an RFP. We need to have discussions, more detailed discussions with them. We need to learn more about them. I mean, we're really at the front end of this entire process, which is uh, why we, you know, the good thing turned out the timeline that we're on. We have a long time and we had a, this isn't a rush decision. Our current season is going to go forward. We're talking about starting this next year, so we have this year to be able to figure this out and make the best decision. Right. I would, I would just say there's almost like no doubt in my mind that there would be experience lost with the change. Um, so like I said, I would just ask that there's an awesome 
business case behind it if we do it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, please. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. My name is Mike Ellens. I live at 6244 Humboldt Avenue South in Richfield, and I own a business in Burnsville on 1301 Cliff Road. Um, my perspective is from an employee of the Park and Rec Department as far as being an umpire. I have been an umpire for 42 years, worked possibly over 21,000 games, and as far as my perspective, I have not worked with a better organization as far as an umpire and how they treat the teams that they deal with, the players, the umpires, the coaches. And it makes you feel good to be able to work for a group like that. And uh, I umpire in about six different cities in the metro area. And uh, certainly the best fields far and above everyone else. And I travel for the conference all across the country and I would put these fields and its management up against any of those and uh, that's all I have. Thank you for sharing that perspective. Okay. Because you're speaking to us from someone who uh, we pay to <laughs> to umpire. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> and you see other fields all over the place and you also umpire in many other games. So you're giving us that lens. Um, and it's also great to hear from all of the people who are participants and have been part of the game and our parks experience for many, many years. So we're seeing it from different lenses and thank you for offering your lens. Okay. Thank you for your thank time. You. Anyone else? If someone hasn't voiced anything that you're thinking about, please come forward. Yes, Dan. Well, Madam Mayor, I'd like to ask if the, uh, uh, I know that the leader of the YMCA was apprehensive about getting in front of the camera and the mic to talk, but um, one of the main issues and concerns, and we heard this with the youth, gar youth garage um, times 75, that changing it would uh, put the quality of the service and the program in jeopardy and I think um, for the people who have submitted a letter of interest um, I think we need to hear from them on what yeah. they see doing and what quality their current organization provides in all of their other uh, yeah. businesses because I believe uh, some of them provide uh, service like this to tens of thousands of players in multiple cities and we need to hear from them as well and whoever's on the other end of your phone. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Mine buzzed earlier. Yeah. Uh, yes. And I was going to ask Mr. Vale to, uh, um, to come to the podium, please. And then I'll come to you, Scott. So, Rick. Hey, yes. Tell us about uh, how you will manage it and grow it and keep the quality you've heard from people. Well, I, I think our proposal, and when I talked to Dan and what you've done with the garage, was the end users should be running their own programs. And that, when we talked about it, the city should have one decision, whether they're going to stay in the program running business or get out. That, that should be your only decision. The softball league should be negotiating with all the groups and making a decision who they want to run their league. Now, you know I, I started the softball league, I started the umpires, I started the fall league and football and all that good stuff. First played softball out here in 63, and everything was run by you know, the private citizen at that point. Uh, I now work for the Metro Baseball League. We're the biggest and the best in the world. We've got the largest league. We keep growing. Uh, there was an article in the Wall Street Journal how youth baseball is on the decline and all over, just like there was in the Star Tribune this uh, month about softball. We keep growing, and you know, we just we do it right. We probably spend $100,000 a year on a website. We've got uh, a website second to none, scheduling programs, live standings, a number of programs in place to you know, run a quality program. Again, the, the softball people have a right to be worried about change. They, they don't know what they're going to get. They should be heavily involved in the process and they should make the decision who they want to run the league. 
Can you elaborate yeah. on a little bit more on Metro Baseball so we can all learn a little bit about what yeah. size and scope? I, I know I heard you say we were the best in the world, <laughs> but uh, more uh, specifics like how many players, teams, cities, whatever that. You yeah, this year we're managed. a little over 700 teams times 12, which is 10,000 kids plus the fall league and clinics and an August classic. Yeah. Um, are you only in the Metro? Or are you? <coughs> is Menominee in the Metro? Is, you know, Menominee, Wisconsin. Hudson, yeah, Wisco right. yeah, Mankato, Austin, Rochester, mainly South Metro, or Southwest East Metro of the Twin City area. But This area would be the sort of the center of where most of your activities, right here, yeah. but you go as far as Austin and Menominee and Rochester, Mankato. All have teams okay. in our league, yes. That's a lot. How long has Metro Baseball been in business? It started, uh, Kirk Devilson started it in 1993. Mm -hmm. hmm. 23 years. And your growth is consistent, so I guess the question is, this is, and I apologize, this is sort of a, a an interview, <laughs> and I, but it's really um, a chance for us to, everyone, to learn a little bit more about uh, you and the YMCA and the other uh, applicant uh, who expressed a letter of interest is, is just to learn more about your organization. Uh, it's a chance for us to learn enough, learn enough to maybe get more comfortable with that change part, so we can at least take the next step in an RFP and talk a little bit more specific in numbers uh, beyond the numbers that we've presented so far. Because I think there's a lot more to it than that. Probably. So. Uh, Hey, where could a person learn uh, about Metro Baseball? And I'll ask the same question of the YMCA and the others. Where could a person do some research to learn about the team's feedback, um, you know, uh, any, any surveys uh, as such? That uh, one of the other uh, people spoke earlier that they do an end of year survey to get, get a pulse as, you know, are we heading in the right direction? Are we providing the right services, quality that you expect, et cetera? Uh, do you do that kind of thing within we, Metro Baseball? We used to do that quite a bit, but the, the surveys all came back highly positive, and we talked to some people, and the uh, people who send back surveys generally rate you pretty high. It's a, it's the phone calls during the year with the complaints that you got to pay attention to. Sure. Okay. So, so any current issues that you've dealt with, like in this past season? I mean, anything that you know, you're big, you're in multiple cities, you've got hundreds of teams, thousands of tens of thousands of players uh, what's the biggest thing that you deal with uh, from a management standpoint of a, of a league that large well uh, I mean the biggest thing is communication which is why we have a website that uh, I mean if there's a rain out everybody gets an email or a text uh, if there's a game change everybody gets it it's it's and without the website we'd be dead but the communication is is so important with that many teams and across sure. that wide of an area uh, even the umpires get emails or texts if they want to on a game. So. Okay. How big is your staff? Uh, we have four full-time uh, employees right now on the baseball side and the gambling manager on the other side to handle the pull tabs. Okay. How many volunteers? And those, do you? Yeah, oh, and those four uh, manage all the 700 teams that you. Yes, we have, we have full four full-time uh, interns in the summer, May, June, July, and. Okay. Uh, that help us out. Any volunteers, or is it all paid staff and interns? No, all the all the communities you know, like Burnsville. Burnsville Traveling Baseball is is primarily all volunteers, and they they of course do the bulk of the work, so make it easy for us. Mm -hmm. The same way we do the softball league. It's it's their league, their decisions. They tell us what to do. We just provide a website and communication and all the tools that we have to mm -hmm. make it run better and better. So are you the conduit between the the city the city facilities providers and the actual teams? I uh, in some case in the fall league uh, we go out and get some of the fields, but for the most part the communities provide their own fields. Uh, they plug them into our website and it's all part of the scheduling process. Big investment in technology it sounds like. Yeah, big investment in technology. So do you interact with the community then? Uh, for instance, we have a scheduler. So, do you interact with that scheduler? We interact with the, like the Burnsville Traveling Baseball would have a field coordinator. He'd coordinate with the city and, and then uh, Dola coordinate with the teams, which uh, teams get which fields and, and 
a lot of times 14s and 15s are multiple teams at one age. They're sharing a field, so that becomes their their problem, not trying to figure out who has the fields when. We have a big scheduling meeting where we schedule our 5,921 games or whatever it was this year in uh, in five hours, and that's there's tables of field coordinators and coaches and just go ahead and get her all done. Okay. Wow, nearly 6,000 games. Yeah. Pretty big. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Scott. <laughs> Good evening. Um, I'm Scott Peterson. I'm the executive director for the Burnsville YMCA, and we were one of the organizations that did submit a, a mm -hmm. letter of interest. I will clarify what I'm about to say, though, is that uh, our intent tonight wasn't necessarily to speak. Our intent was to sit here and learn from from the folks that are sharing uh, their thoughts, their passions for for the leagues that they're in, and from the city council with what they were expect, what they're looking for in that. So uh, our intent was really just to, to sit and listen and and learn from the folks that were here, and uh, so if something would go forward, that uh, we would feel that we would have the the feedback from the, from the participants that are passionate about it as well as uh, the council as far as what they were looking for so that uh, things could be done in a high quality way as many people uh, recognize tonight with the best in class uh, statement about the programs here because we would want to be involved with something that that continue to be best in class if that's where we went mm -hmm. because I think a lot of the, c the concerns that I r hear from people and also uh, what we received in many emails we received in, in November has to do with the quality of the experience and the um, relationship that they have with the city. And the fear is losing the quality of that experience and losing the quality of the play and the fields. And so when you hear people say this is the best organization that they've interacted with, when they play all over and you hear <coughs> statements like best in class or what are we trying to fix it doesn't seem like it's a huge benefit to move out of something that is really terrific and to what and I think it's the to what is what people are afraid of and for me I want to ensure that people are going to have the same experience and the same quality of play and the relationship between that organization and the city because those assets belong to us, to the citizens of Burnsville. Yeah. And, I, and I think the Y has been around for 170 mm -hmm. plus years. We've been involved in athletics and recreation for mm -hmm. uh, many, many years. And we look at the history just here in Burnsville, uh, going back to uh, when when we were serving the community out of a little house behind Fairview Ridges Hospital with a with that. a plywood sign in front of it, um, serving the community, doing different things to the point where we are now in a full facility um, that that's meeting the needs of the community at many different levels, and um, many people uh, think of it as a, a community center for uh, for the city of Burnsville. Um, we've been we've been established here, and there's good feelings about that, and. Uh, when you take a look at the power of what we're able to do by leveraging volunteers to be a part of, of the organization and part of the programs um, is is a pretty unique experience for uh, a nonprofit and a and a leader in the community. Uh, when we talk about sports and what we've been involved in, uh, we've had sports for for many years, and uh, we've also recommitted to that vision of. Of sports because it's part of a it's part of a commitment to a to uh, healthy living and keeping people active and uh, not only just the active part but the the social piece that comes with it and the and all the pieces that come around um, a, a broad perspective of health 
and uh, so over this last year, we've been we have been revisiting our own sports programs and, and made a commitment as an association in the Twin Cities and hired uh, an athletic director in the Twin Cities. And TC is over uh, over here with us tonight, uh, learning from the conversations here tonight. We have a sports director, a full time sports director at Burnsville as well, and um, we've done that at all of our branches to to ramp up. Uh, the opportunity to be engaged in sports uh, and to help our community be strengthened that way and, and to engage folks at a different level. Uh, as we look at the sports programs uh, that are here and the information that was in the in the request earlier, I think there's an op we're talking a lot about softball tonight because that is such the that's the lifeblood of this whole of this whole process and and uh, has been huge and likes mentioned been world it's been best in best in class but there's also opportunities I think to expand the sports into other areas there's other sports to keep people active and and that are lifetime opportunities as well that may that could play into this as what well, could play into this to um, deepen our deepen the role of athletics and and wellness and activity in our community too and I think we're positioned to be able to help do that yeah because uh, as JJ mentioned at the top of his presentation it's not just softball they do volleyball right. mm -hmm. and uh, other athletic yep. uh, experiences so it's not just softball that we're talking about tonight right. it's a whole range of right. athletic activity okay Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Dan, you have a question well, I for Scott? Be fair and ask you. So can you elaborate on the current uh, softball, baseball uh, that uh, the YMCA is involved in, whether here or South Measure region or region? Right. And, and I, I'll be honest, and we aren't, we aren't experienced in the softball. You know, that in the adult leagues is a new area for us that we haven't done a lot of, uh, a lot of work in. But we do have uh, experience in our athletic directors. We do have ex we do have um, technology pieces that do that will allow us to to do those and to jump in some of the rings that have been mentioned here already, with online participation, communication, scheduling, and, and all and all of those pieces. Um, okay, so okay. just we all understand it would be a new program for Absol yeah. the Y to, uh, yeah. to take on. Mm -hmm. um, would it also? Uh, uh, do you have any youth? Programs in athletics that you run currently, whether softball, baseball, etc. We have, in total across, across the Twin Cities, we've got a four, we've got over four thousand youth involved in uh, in athletic activities right now. Okay. And you have a big website. We're, <laughs> yeah, we use Player Space and uh, and uh, integrate that into our communication tools. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Rick, is uh, baseball your only uh, activity, athletic activity, or do you do volleyball mm -hmm. and all the others that we offer? The Dementia Baseball League just does baseball. Just baseball. I'm still running a full league. <coughs> okay. uh, Bill. I just, just for our citizens and people listening, I'd like to thank the Y uh, for, among other things, for being, uh, uh, when I, we talked about earlier about uh, uh, the city getting mostly out of the garage other than providing the space, the why is somebody that uh, stepped up as well as the school district. And so thank you for that, because that is something I would have probably voted to close. And so I, I don't, you know, again, we're talking public, private, etc. But at the end of the day, it was the school district and the why that stepped up to, to take over uh, that uh, project. And thank you. Mm -hmm. But it and, made sense because the school uh, district was I, all the students for I, after school and I, uh, we just merged merged I, with some of their after school programs. Correct. I'm just trying to clarify that. Yeah. We were talking about it didn't go to some uh, private yeah. mm -hmm. entity. It went to the Y and to the school district mm -hmm. and I just want to clarify yeah. that. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, thank you for being a partner. Okay. Um, is there anyone else who wishes to, to speak to the issue? Anyone else? Okay, seeing no one else wanting to speak, but uh, we got a lot of emails and uh, also received some uh, even today uh, with people who can't uh, be here. So now, Council, your pleasure. Uh, with the background that we received, and uh, what are your thoughts? Do you want to move forward with a deeper dive and ask staff to um, 
to go for an RFP to decide whether that's what you want to do. Um, what is your pleasure? Mary. Uh, first of all, I think this was a useful ex exercise. I learned a, a great deal about how the, this operation goes. Um, I, the, and in learning this, I thought the logical thing would be to, outs if we were going to outsource, to outsource the entire recreation program, the whole, the whole thing youth, uh, adults, all the sports, and I mean, if we're going to do that, that's how, how it should be done. Now, I was told that that, because I had raised this question earlier, uh, I was told that that's not possible because of funding, the way things are funded. It doesn't seem to make any sense to me to separate out one sport to outsource. I don't think the staff has ever been res outsource averse. Uh, JJ, I know you got a lot of compliment uh, tonight for presenting this, but my experience over the, the time I've been on council is that staff has suggested outsourcing at times when council hasn't even thought about it. So I think that if staff had felt that this would be an, a, a, a good cost saving or more efficient way to do it, that 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 would have been offered to us. So I'm going to say discontinue the process at this time because basically it's not broken. I don't see anything that has to be fixed. And I don't see separating out one adult sport for outsourcing and not doing the whole thing. Okay. Bill? I'm going to pass. I want to hear my fellow council people because I'm really torn on this. This is probably the hardest issue in its own odd way for me since I've been here in my six years. So I want to I want to hear more. Well, you also know what uh, Dan has his thoughts are. Are you yeah. taking away my opportunity? No, no, to speak? I'm not taking away your opportunity <laughs> because I think you'll, you'll, you'll just reiterate. But that's okay. Well, I, so, I'm so you want to go? Sure. Well, I first want to clarify uh, as at the beginning I said this isn't a case of uh, replacing something that's broken. This is a philosophical question that we all face in government. So we either are choosing to and supporting government to maintain a program which has multiple private sector providers providing the exact same service, okay, and that's just the softball and the baseball, not broomball. I don't think there's a profitable private sector broomball league out there, but when one emerges, uh, emerges then we could... Uh, look at that, but right now the one that's out there and there's a lot of them is For adult softball and baseball. So a vote to say I Want to keep this with the government is a vote to say I am for government doing what the private sector does and has done for 20 to 30 years So I haven't changed my position. We haven't even gotten deep enough in the details yet I believe we need to go to the RFP because I think the numbers aren't necessarily as exacting as they probably should be, and I think there's more profit in here than, it, than what we're seeing, and I think we'll bear that out when we get to the other side. But I also think there's more to the agreement than that. What I'm looking for is not only one of these private sector providers to take this program over because they exist and we shouldn't be in this business, no matter how good the program is, we're sitting here saying, yeah, government should hang on to what the private sector is doing. When else have we made a decision like that where we go, well, let's just get into that business. Private sector is doing it, but government can do it better, so let's take that over too. So this is a very philosophical decision that reflects a person's position because we, ha we don't have just one. We have multiple private sector providers that are ready to take this program over and do it and have done it for many, many years. So. I just want to make sure that's clear. Yeah. Clarification, yeah. though, it seemed to me, I read here somewhere that only one of the three who responded felt that they could uh, mm -hmm. do it uh, any for for. That's yeah. based on the numbers that were provided. You think yeah. the numbers were they were lying? I think the numbers were rough estimates. I think the numbers need to be taken a little yeah. closer look. Well. Uh, if I may respond to the philosophical thing, I, I do not see 
running recreation program yeah. as being really outside of the scope of a city. Because mm -hmm. that's the status quo. Because most no, cities okay. do I it today, just, right? I just don't see it that way. Well, okay. how many times have we said well, at, the, at I this think council? That we have yeah. a different yeah. opinion. Yeah. Well, and that's okay. How many times have we sat here at this at this council making a decision where we actually had something that the city did provided by multiple private sector providers? Pretty rare. Right? This isn't a question that really comes up that often, but we have one in front of us right now. Okay. So I'm I'm concerned about the unintended consequences of chopping up our recreation. So am program. I. I'm 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 concerned about making a rash decision that's, before well, we get all the facts. That's why I said if they were, if we were going to outsource it, we should do the whole thing. Well, the, at the premise, as I mentioned, when the private sector has providers, I don't I know that there's any broom ball, ball or <laughs> or volleyball, but there might be. Um, don't hold your um, and. Second, I think when we get to the RFP, we're going to learn a lot more. And then we can make an educated decision. Right now, we're making a decision off of surface numbers. We haven't even gone through the entire process to make a fully educated decision. So I think it would be premature for us to stop this. That's, of course, my opinion. And it doesn't cost us that much to go through the RFP process. Okay, Heather, did you want to speak before uh, I go to Suzanne? Just a, just a clarification, if, it, if that's okay. Um, I mean, the analysis was based on all adult programs, so it would, if, I mean, the analysis does include broom ball, um, so if we, we move forward into the next stage, we would be asking for broom ball and volleyball, volleyball and sand ball. I mean, so I just want people to be clear on that. I think, I think you are, but um, I started to get a little muddled as I was listening, so um, just wanted to clarify that. It doesn't include youth, to be clear, but, yeah. um, but the analysis is based a, on a all really adult programs. So. Upward trending in pickleball. Because I know we've. <laughs> That's probably senior programs. Actually, well, excuse some. me. I, I, hello. <laughs> yes. Isn't it a senior program? It's a senior program. It's <laughs> but it is a program. That's right. It's but, a program. And it's an okay. athletic my point program. Being, it's a wonderful thing. Um, yeah. My point being is that it, it wasn't included. Senior programs are not included in the scope of the analysis. Well, but it, to senior Mary's point, are these are it. all so, athletic right. programs that we use uh, staff. To sure. manage and Absolutely. to schedule. Absolutely, ma'am. Yes. I think the biggest surprise is uh, curling, uh, which is exploding in popularity at a well, new facility built in a suburb to our west. Yes, curling who, is another came to big us one, and, and the other one, one is the disc golf. <laughs> yeah, is huge. I mean, that, and uh, there's, my, there's we profit. schedule over at uh, at uh, Red Oak. Do we schedule at Red Oak? The mm -hmm. disc. We have a disc golf course. Yeah. Yes, we do. One yeah. of the best. Yeah. Okay. That one's not a profitable model yet. Suzanne. <laughs> well, I want to thank everyone, first of all, or yeah. the three um, private sectors that did um, respond to our letters, or, or application rather. Um, with all due respect, Dan, um, I have to say that I also feel that the uh, programming and scheduling of adult athletics, especially softball, volleyball, broom ball, I think is well within the city scope. I am, I am comfortable with that, uh, that the city of Burnsville is doing it. I also feel that our, from hearing from everyone, the community relationships, I mean, that is huge to me, um, to hear that the folks here feel like they have a connection to the city with that community relationship. The quality of the programming, um, the continuity that would continue having our staff continue to do this, I think outweighs the small benefit. We are making money. This is one of our programs that is making money. And the small, I think, amount, from my understanding, and the numbers could be a little different, yeah, I, think they are. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's worth risking mm -hmm. um, all of those good things mm -hmm. for a little bit of money. And then, again, the turnover of staff, we've heard about interns, volunteers, that's all great, but what happens then to that best in class, um, the quality of the programming? Mm -hmm. I have a concern about that. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I feel the same as um, Council Member Sherry that at this point I would probably just, I would say discontinue the process, I wouldn't vote to go on with an RFP. Okay. Bill? Have you made up your mind? <laughs> I'll wait to hear from you. Okay. 
So I go back to October when we had this conversation. And uh, I think all of us, as we listened to it and you made your case, Dan, looked at it and said, okay, you wanted to see whether we could make more money. Because for us it's about, whether it's the private sector or the public sector, doing a particular function, what is the return on that investment? And we were making some $12,000 was the net, right? And uh, we were going to say, well, it has to be substantial for us to say, okay, let's make a change. So one of the things that we looked at, and of course, what I'm hearing you say, perhaps the numbers aren't um, true. Is that what you're? They're estimates. The, I think. I yeah. think we need to take a little closer look. And you think we need to take a closer look? So here are my concerns. Uh, I I understand taking a closer look. My concern is that uh, the one with the most experience is Metro Baseball League but theirs is just baseball. Huge operation, and the unintended consequences to all of the things that we hear from the players who are in leagues that are in the city of Burnsville. Would that the quality would still continue? The experience? and the interaction with our staff and the facilities that they're going to have. So for me, those are concerns. My concern is that all of our citizens, because in all the emails that we received, most of them are people who uh, run leagues and who live here, have been part of it for many, many years, and uh, and then some who are living savage, but have businesses in Burnsville. Okay, so those are my concerns. And then then I asked the question: If we did a dip, deeper dive. and get the RFPs, what are we gaining? Yep. Information. A lot more information. Mm -hmm. There's more to the package to be discussed. It's not just what we're looking at right now. We haven't even gotten to that level of negotiation yet. I mean, you've done business deals, Madam Mayor. You know I this have. as much not as I do. Not only in land development, but also in We're only in at the letter of interest. That's yeah. skimming the surface. We're, yeah. my, we're a my long ways from that, getting uh, I, I think uh, the only viable, I mean, uh, and, and uh, Scott, I know you run a lot of youth programs, but when it comes to adult and all this, the scope of the programs that we have, for me, it's not losing that quality and that best in class. I mean, that's Absolutely. a brand that has made Burnsville stand out uh, in in the the industry of softball. In, in so, for me, I don't want to lose that quality best in the, class the, the and the quality, quality. Uh, that Absolutely people. has to be and preserved. For, and for the folks who have come together to put a council together, and I think that's Mr. Brennan. You were part of that council, putting it together so that the experience for all of the players is one that they can say this is a quality program and they want to continue to play. Because when you're involved in baseball or athletic uh, experiences, you're in it for 20 some years. Mr. Barter's been in it for 20 some years. And I, I, I mean, all of the emails, it's either you've been in it for how long, Mr. Brennan? Probably over 30 years. Ago. Yes. <laughs> yes. I've been in it for 26. I, when I first moved to Minnesota, played here in Burnsville. I played in about well, nine cities. Nothing is like Burnsville. Yeah, and see, I, I hear that, I read it, and so for me, that's what I'm 
I, I'm, I don't want to lose. And it's that brand. Uh, and it's that quality. And it's the experience. There are two choices. Go forward with an RFP, and I'm not sure what we get from that. And I'm looking at... So, if we went with an RFP, how much time JJ, Terry, and Heather is going to go into this with everything else that's on our plate with regards to all of the facilities that we have that needs repair. So I'm thinking of all the work that's on your plate right now. We have a lot of, we're an aging community, so where I sit, I'm looking at a much bigger picture and not just this. And what are, what are we doing with regard to all of the things that need to be done. Heather. Uh, Madam Mayor, I'm going to let Terry speak to how much time. It is a significant amount of time to put an RFP together. Now mm -hmm. we certainly can do that. Um, I guess, but what I would ask of the council is if you just decide to go in that direction, um, if there's a, a number or an estimate of how much you want these folks to hit when applying for the RFP or a, a revenue target, it would be helpful to at least have a sense of that because I That's think. That's my next I, thing. It's because I'm actually, uh, I'm sorry. Go um, ahead. Um, I think the numbers are, are in pretty good shape in terms of the estimates. They do include benefits, um, and I think we, um, and so I think they do give so you So you're saying the basis. numbers include the benefits? Yes, they do, and yeah. they may be a little low, but they're not going to be out of, out of line. Yeah. Um, because, as you all remember, if you work 30% time, you have to pay full benefits now um, under mm -hmm. the Affordable Care Act. So, um, <laughs> so that doesn't change much, but... Um, and so, so I, I just want to give you see if if you do decide to go the direction of RFP, it would be helpful for staff if we had a better sense of what you were no, looking for. Because that we would was want my a, a my next question to the council because I just go back to October, and why all of us? It was because if we were going to make more money, how much more money do you want to make? And then that says whether these folks are going to be able to deliver that amount of money to what we want. Because mm -hmm. that's where, if we're going to go in that direction and to have staff go down that road, what is the amount that you want to see? That's the next step with the RFP. No, that's no, no. I'm hoping to no, get no, to. no. <laughs> we need to say to staff, when you're going to go out to an RFP, the people who, it's just like a, a, a bidding. <laughs> You need to hit this mark for us to say that's, that's going to be a viable place to mm -hmm. go. It can't be, let's do an RFB and go through the exercise and come out with, with a net zero. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is a lot of work for a net zero. So for me, I want to ask all of you, what is the amount? Is it uh, we should be making... How much, and what is it that we want to cover to make that much? And we want a partner, just like we did with the <coughs> other programs. We're looking for a partner in this. It's not just about taking over the program and us wiping our hands of it. I, w I would like to see this partner um, contribute to the upkeep of the ball fields, the enhancements of the ball fields. They need to be like our partners at Baseball 191, like our partners with the uh, Lions Club, like our partners in other places, and I think they're willing to do that. But the the letter of intent didn't outline any of that. Therefore, what did we really learn with the letter of intent? I have an interest, or a letter of interest. I have an interest in doing this, and I answered the questions yeah. that were on it. Well, the, but in, the interest also to get... tells us uh, what their background is. So yeah, we have yeah. one that has a lot of experience. Yeah. So I, I just I don't. Again, I said this once before, I'll say it again. I don't think we're at the point where we can make an educated decision because we haven't even gotten close. Yeah, but As you and I both I... know, being involved in deals like this over the last 20 or 30 years, we're not to that point where we can make a decision. We're dismissing it out of hand. I always want to know what my profit margin is going to be. So sure. that's why I'm asking this question. So right now we know that it's 12. So what is it above that? Because that was the discussion that we get more. Let's validate the 12 while we set that number, mm. too. Terry. Uh, Madam Mayor, Council Members, you asked a question about the amount of time we have invested yeah. into the letter of interest uh, process. We're estimating that at about 80 to 90 hours. Uh, I think doing RFP would probably 
be a larger endeavor than that. Um, mm -hmm. When I estimate 100 to 120 hours, yeah. part of that would be driven by um, the level of involvement that we would uh, have with the softball council. I think Mr. Vale, who spoke tonight, makes a really good point that the softball council should be involved in the RFP mm -hmm. process mm -hmm. in evaluating that. So mm -hmm. I think that would take some staff time to get the group together and get yeah, involved. Coordinating so, all of that and facilitating yeah. those meetings and it, so forth. Yeah, so I, that's our best guess. Uh, of course, there, there's not really a template for any of this. We're, yeah. I, I, we looked around and couldn't find a lot of letter mm -hmm. of interest formats yeah. for adult leagues, so uh, we, we had to start from scratch. And we've got a good start, but I think really realistically you're looking at another 100 to 120 hours mm -hmm. Of staff time and the other point I would make the more we can clarify yes. the expectations of the people responding to, uh, in fairness that's to them yeah. it's a lot of work for them to respond to and well, so and that's the reason the why I I want them. us to be yeah. clear about how much how much more do we want to make 25,000 50,000 100,000 what is it and how much of it is cash and how much is it isn't kind in helping with the fields and so forth mm -hmm. so uh, I want to understand from the council because it, when we say, okay, we continue with the RFP, we need to be clear about what our expectation is because they can say, you know what, too high a bar, I'm out of, I'm out of here. So, and that's, and then that's okay. Everybody can opt out. Suzanne. Well, I, I guess just listening, my question comes to mind is, is this a good time for our staff to be taking this on. We are at the busiest season. We're starting the softball season. We're starting our um, park mm -hmm. renovations and whatnot. I just wonder, does, well, is this really the best time for staff to be taking on another yeah. something else on their plate? Well, and that's, that's the reason why I asked the larger yeah. question, yeah. you know. And, so. and, but if we're going to go down this road, I want to clarify what is the profit margin we're looking for. Bill, do you have any in? Oh, yeah, Steve. <laughs> and Bill, you, you need to speak to the issue. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. I'm going to go first. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Madam Mayor, members of the council, um, I think the profit question is a good one. And the reason I say that that's a good one, we're mm -hmm. talking about a net revenue of $57,000. We can look at the benefit percentages we're talking about, potentially add $6,000 more to the cost to the city, which would increase the mm -hmm. to potential profit yeah. of these analysis. So mm -hmm. we're still looking at something on the magnitude of less than $20,000 at the end of the day of an increase in revenues. And yeah. big picture, mm -hmm. um, there's only so much money to be had here. It's a 50, without raising fees, the piece. there's only so much money to be had. And, yep. and I would tell you, um, you put me in charge of a substantial amount of tens of millions of dollars in the city. I don't know that if, if it's strictly a profit angle, this isn't going to necessarily um, be a low-hanging fruit from a profit standpoint. Yeah. It really, if the council philosophically, I believe it is a philosophical yeah. um, argument, and that's really it is where a this philosophical needs to be. rather um, than but, the business. But to think we're going to, there isn't, you know, we, we can debate about the numbers. The plus or minus on these numbers is about six thousand dollars that we're yeah. talking about tonight. If there, yeah. if there is a little higher percentage of benefits, yeah, um, which does translate to profit in the in the RFPs, um, but it's six thousand dollars we're talking about, not something on a huge magnitude unless we want to go to um, increasing our revenues. And, and, I, and I would just add that. It is a philosophical conversation about whether we should be in the business of delivering that yeah. service or not, I think. Yeah. Okay. Can I, can I do you want to go or do you want me to go? Well, I just want to ask clarification that Mr. Albrecht brought up. When you said there was a benefits earlier, it was uh, stated that it might be a little low. Yep. When you say benefits, is that related to the expense side of the equation? Yes. The okay, expense so, of the equation. So, yeah, so let's 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 say so we the said there one point two were was our multiplier was for our mm -hmm. salary plus benefits. Mm -hmm. Right. Maybe it's down by a tenth. So it's one point three is what it might have supposed to have been in that gotcha. combination. Which, mm -hmm. which would drive which, up the expense. Yes, by yeah. about five, six thousand right. dollars in the overall. Which and would so, actually lower the twelve down down to yes, six. Yes, that's it lowers right. it, it gives when you, you were more saying profit. it yep. sounded the way you no, worded sorry. it, it sounded like it would add to it, go from no, twelve to eighteen. No, it, it's it actually go from twelve to it six. It raises our expenses and lowers our our current okay. profit, profit just to there about six thousand dollars yes. if you go that route. So in reality yeah. we're somewhere between zero and six thousand in profit. Yeah. We're yeah, I mean, you could, yeah. I think we're pretty comfortable. We're in that six thousand dollar range, probably. Mm -hmm. Well, it's probably more in that six to twelve thousand dollars because we did include benefits. So this wasn't right. a benefit-free calculation. Yep. It gets tricky with 
different part staff and all of those things. So sure. um, I, I think I just wanted to make the, the conversation that um, unless we increase our revenues, there's only so much money to gain. If money is our sole goal, I don't think that this is mm -hmm. in the big picture of the recreation budget. Yeah. It's the overall recreation budget. It's a pretty small thing. Yes. So from a philosophical standpoint, that's where I yeah. think you would be moving forward. Um, Agreed. From yeah. a standpoint of an RFP, this is not something that would be done for this year's softball. This is something that would be done for a future year. We wouldn't, we would, you know, yeah. be moving. So um, we do RFPs all the time, but it yeah. is a significant uh, time consumption. But I think we want to be, sh be clear on what that magnitude of dollars. Yeah. If there is an expectation that we're going to go above that in revenues, mm -hmm. then we have to, or we have to understand that we are going to have to shrink yeah. some costs mm -hmm. beyond what we were talking yeah. to. So. And see, for me, the philosophical conversation has to do with, we, we've done this many times, and we've always looked at the profit margin, and we've always looked at what is the outcome. Case in point, when we brought in all of the work for our motor vehicles, all the maintenance, and how much money we saved. Those mm -hmm. were all outsourced. Mm -hmm. And we saved more money and had a better quality of maintenance to our vehicles by bringing them in-house. Mm -hmm. So it's not, for, so for me, it's about a business decision, a good business decision, and how we're going to move forward with all of this. So when we talked about this in October, it was about what's the profit? Will we gain more? or not, because mm -hmm. for me philosophically it comes down to the bottom line and what our taxpayers are paying. <coughs> so Bill, are you ready to make a statement? Yes. Um, I came in tonight to vote against, uh, likely vote against it, but I've heard all the arguments and I will state it this way. Um, I, for my own reasons, I'll try to, you know, state, think that we should go forward. I think it's worth the time and the effort, and I'll uh, look to the young lady that made a great comment this way, that I wouldn't vote for it in the end unless it, you know, matched sort of what you said. And uh, in that regard, for me, it is not a, if it, as long as it's revenue neutral, uh, I'm comfortable with that as, as long as it, at the end of the day uh, they can deliver a good product and uh, uh, answer some of the concerns that were addressed tonight. Because again, I philosophically, generally, if the city can get out of doing something, I'm, I believe they should do law enforcement, fire, roads, and if uh, a long sort of dance thinking, if, if, the, if there is some potential private entity that can do the job, then the city, uh, in, in, in my concept or belief of new normal, uh, uh, then, then they should uh, be looked at. And I thank uh, the Y for coming because that, not that the Y would be the one uh, that would uh, uh, get it or anything else, but uh, when the Y is here and interested, uh, I pay attention to that. They're a good organization. The other gentlemen, uh, uh, I pay attention. Whether in the end of the day they'll be able to deliver, uh, if we go forward, uh, something that's uh, reasonable, I have no idea. But it What's would the be profit a, margin you want uh, to see? Revenue neutral. Whatever, if, if it's 12,000, if the numbers are 12,000 and, and the other entity can deliver, these entities, when they see the hardcore RFP, can deliver something revenue neutral, then that's fine with me. In other words, if, if we really do net 12,000, which the numbers will be looked at if it's 8,000 uh, and the, uh, uh, the other entity, the, the private entity can uh, essentially match that, uh, I'm comfortable with that. You asked, you asked my opinion, I gave my yeah. opinion there. <laughs> okay, Suzanne. I just want to say I really just have, I have a lot of concerns uh, moving forward with, again, the quality of the program, and the relationships that have been developed over the years with the city. I'm sure there are a lot of great people that can do things. I haven't heard anyone that said they can do all of these things, um, all of our mm -hmm. adult athletics. That concerns mm -hmm. me, too. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, the continuity, all of the things that I mentioned, I just, with all due respect, I just mm -hmm. wouldn't be comfortable. Mary? Uh, 
I think there are many things that we could be outsourcing in this city. One of them I think of is our paramedics. Um, and we don't because we feel that there is benefit in the city providing them. And generally, I, I go with Bill and Dan on this kind of thinking, but I think the unintended consequences here are too great for a minimal gain. Mm -hmm. And I do not want it. I don't see any value. I don't want to spend 120 hours of staff time on this. Mm -hmm. I think that's costly enough. Mm -hmm. OK. So I stand to be the tiebreaker here. In October, I said it had to be more than just revenue neutral. And it had to be, to be substantially more than $12,000 a net. Because for me, it's about a business deal. Can and you that, say that it's not? Huh? Can you say with what you know today that it won't be? Uh, f but it's mostly everything. It's not just baseball. It's uh, having to do with broom ball and also um, sand, volleyball, and all of that. And nobody has spoken to that. Correct. What Mr. Veal and his organization is good at is baseball. And they do an exceptional job. And uh, he tells us that they are best in the world in delivering that kind of service. But not volleyball and not any of that. So for me, looking at that and looking at the quality of the work that's being done by staff at this point, and also um, the relationship with the uh, Baseball Council, I am saying discontinue. Because from a business perspective, I don't see that we're going to be getting any more uh, than that. So, yes. You, just one point. You've made your decision uh, clearly. but. Um, there is no reason why in an RFP process that the YMCA, for instance, could take the broom ball and the volleyball and the others mm -hmm. and another organization, whether it's uh, Metro Baseball or the other one who we didn't hear from tonight, the third provider, mm -hmm. um, do the softball. It isn't one solution for all of the needs. We have three different um, providers who came to the table all with their own expertise mm -hmm. and areas of expertise. Mm -hmm. And without going through the RFP, we'll never know. Yes, but see, with the RFP, it's saying to one organization, what can you deliver and what is the, is the net result for us? Yeah, it's so, not one organization. Yeah. We have three. With three we have organizations. So, they, so what you're saying is that one organization can come in and says, we'll just do uh, broom ball, and the other one would say, we'll just do the softball. Yeah, and so our two, staff right. will be dealing with three different entities well, in, they, in delivering service and mm -hmm. managing our our assets. I think what we're really talking about here, the elephant in the room, is ba the softball is one and everything else is much, okay. much smaller in scope. And um, it isn't the size and magnitude and demand of time. I mean, I think staff made it very clear tonight that softball really eats up the overwhelming majority of the yeah. staff time because it, it's a lot of teams, a lot of players, and a lot of uh, activities compared to those other ones. They, in their own words, I yeah. believe, said the other ones were sort of ancillary to mm -hmm. the magnitude of the softball. Yeah. Uh, they don't have and thousands of people playing volleyball and thousands of people mm -hmm. playing broomball. So uh, I don't want us to think uh, that it's it, it has to be this way or not at all. Mm -hmm. In an RFP process, a lot of this can be vetted out. In an RFP process, the additional numbers could come out to the surface and get negotiated on the table. They didn't in the letter of interest because it wasn't part of the letter of interest. And so that's you're why looking at a different process. It's not an RFP then. Well, it's an RFP, but the RFP needs to be done differently than the letter of interest because this was very limited in scope. Yeah, no, but when an RFP is put together, you're, you're mm -hmm. saying, here's a request for proposal. Yes. And we can and put then they some can, things in And that so work. you're saying yes. it's something different. It's not one organization saying that I can deliver this service for you at this price point. I, I'm really trying not to have that entire discussion now. And this is kind of what the frustration I went through with the first phase of this is, and, you know, forgive me, Madam Mayor, but you know better, okay? You should know better that this is a type of process that, a lot gets learned when you get into an RFP and you get into more specifics. That wasn't the letter of interest. It didn't go into that level of detail. We haven't even discussed two or three things that I've thought about all along and I've wanted to talk about, but 
We're not there yet. And I don't want to have the discussion. I don't want to put the cart before the horse because I think that's unfair to all the players and to the people watching. The, you know, we are a public. The, the staff needs to do some work. So I, I'm a little surprised that you wouldn't support going to the next step so we can properly vet all of the things that are potentially on the table. And I'd be happy to share those with you. Okay. But I don't, I don't play the game of, you know, having discussions behind the scenes. And, uh, you know, I respect the process, the transparent process here, and I bring this to the table. I don't have, you know, discussions uh, outside of the, the halls of this, this council. I have the discussion here in front of you at the proper time. And, and there's only so much at this point in the stage of the game that I can say about what I think this could turn into because we need to follow the process for the transparency and the respect to our stakeholders and the citizens. I don't want to seem like it's a, it's, you know, my deal, right? It's all of ours. Okay. Uh, Suzanne? Well, I just, I think what we're trying to do is what we, I mean, it's our business to run the city and to do what's best for our citizens. And if the RFP didn't involve hours and hours and hours of staff time, I'd say, sure, let's do it. But we have to look at the whole picture of what we're requesting. And again, for the return, I don't feel that it's beneficial. Do you understand? See, wait a minute. You bring up a point that it's not really an RFP that you're looking at. You're looking at a collaboration. Because with an RFP, you're asking one entity whether it is um, uh, Metro Baseball or the Minnesota Y, or you're saying having staff sit down and look at a collaboration and see who's going to do what. That's one step of the process. Can we just have that? Can we move forward so we can have this discussion? So we can vet this all the way through before we make well, the final okay. decision? Okay, so, you know, it's about Please. clarification. It's about clarification of how and what the process is. Is yes. it an RFP? The RFP is having one entity whether it's the uh, Metro Baseball saying, here, this is what we can do for you. We'll take over this. You know, and that's what their request is going to be. The Y is going to say, here's what we're going to do. And the uh, Minnesota Sports Federation is saying, here's what we can do for you. But what you're saying is because Metro Baseball just does baseball, mm -hmm. That they might say are pretty similar. They well, I mean, I mean they, well, well, it's fields yeah, and yeah, balls yeah. and players no, no, and bats. It's baseball. And, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's a different size. But the ball, other is different pitch. broom ball and right. volleyball and all of that. So you're saying right. there might be a collaborative of right. people, I and that's what you want to go down. Bingo. So here's the thing that I can offer. I will go down that road, but I still want to see a net return. I don't want to go. I, I don't want to go through this whole process for zero. I'm sorry. I understand that philosophically you're okay with the yeah. city hanging on to it. But yeah. and, and I'm, I'm in agreement with you. I think there's, you know, I think uh, Councilmember Coughlin said he'd be okay with net zero, but if there yeah. was some revenue in it, great. That's even better, right? Mm -hmm. His threshold yeah. for that decision is net zero. Yeah, Yours is a little higher, and I respect that. The yeah. way this discussion is going right now is I see a great danger in balkanizing the recreation yeah. program. Yeah. It's going to look like, like, Eastern Europe by the time we're done. I mean, this is crazy. Well, that's what I, that's I'm why trying to I get said, at. why I said earlier, if you're going to do it, do the whole recreation program. Yeah. Because it it should be all cohesive as it is now. It's cohesive. Well, Mary, that's what I'm trying to get at. Is it, you know, what because for me, I mean, the, the, the uh, 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 Madam Mayor, RFP... Madam if I can call it, I mean, if, if there are three people here who feel we don't need to go down the path, then we don't need to go down it. Yeah. Well, he, he made a point that I'm trying to respect in terms of a collaborative. But you're right also to raise it. If now we're, we're, we're breaking things apart and we're having a much larger consortium, if you will, of people handling the programs of the city. And then what's the net return? I do not want a zero net return because it's a lot of work and it's the assets uh, of the citizens. Well, let's also respect the fact that the city staff works with a multitude of different providers. 
in a lot of different areas within the city. Mm -hmm. And that to call segmenting softball from the other sports as what you referred to, Madam, uh, Madam uh, Council Member Chair, I think is a bit overstating and extreme. We're, we're talking about potentially two providers, one for the softball and one for the other sports, if that's what it comes out. But we, we're speculating. You sound like that. We're speculating. Yeah. And I think we need to stop speculating and allow the process to play out so we can all learn a little bit more about what could happen and the possibilities and the additional revenues because we're never going to get there if we shut the door now. And it, that would be a disappointment for me. Okay. Suzanne? I cannot see breaking it up. I just don't think it makes sense, personally. Well, then I'll say this. I'll go through the process. If everybody agrees at a higher return on investment, not a net, I will not go on a net. And a reasonable one. I mean, if we set the number artificially too high, we're going to shut the door anyway, so we may as well save our breath and our time. But if the number is realistic, and I think you would be realistic, yes. I think we should. I, I had that discussion with uh, City Manager uh, Johnson a, as part of this in one of my one-on-ones, that it, it should be a net. I'm, I'm a little more, I'm, I'm more on your page from this than, than I'm a uh, Council Member person, Coughlin's. So I want, and, I want to make sure but, that this, if we're going to go through I'm, all of this, there okay. better be a much higher sure. return on this investment well, let's, than, than, than let's just those, a net zero. Let's have those discussions. That's all I'm asking. We're talking about adult athletics. <laughs> As Mr. Alberg pointed out, yeah. that you're not going to make a lot of money on this. This is we're, It's not going I to know. be twice as much as what we're making now. It's just not, the numbers aren't there. You would have to. Where are you going to cut the cost? Where are you going to raise the No, no, I, they I have see, to do it, not I us. See, it, the number's probably 6000 and I can bank. We'll make double that. <laughs> Well, we I have, have twelve thousand. Twelve thousand. Twelve thousand is what we have now. Yeah, yeah. That, that's. And I just don't see. <laughs> that's and not a big deal. Players are not going to be happy if they see their fees going up. And I. Not about raising fees at all. No. The discussion the never was from? around raising fees. But, Madam Mayor, um, I, I guess I'm a little confused in terms of the process. I mean, in order to get <laughs> apples to apples. You probably do need to go to an RFP process. Well, yeah, and um, and I think that I um, mean there there will be some inefficiencies if you have more than one provider, um, and just in yeah. terms of it will take you know I twice some not maybe not twice the staff time, but it will take additional staff time to deal with more than one provider. Um, that being said, I mean we certainly can do that and we can break that out. Um, I mean I think that we would want. I mean, the council, if you if you choose to go this route, would um, we just would need to know kind of what some of these I, parameters I just can't are? And see. I just heard one that you know this fees must may not increase more than X percentage. I mean, you know what I mean? There's yeah. there are certain things that you know because obviously raising fees is a place where you can make more revenue. Mm -hmm. I, um, I've just heard that that's not mm -hmm. what you're looking for. Um, well, but the thing is, the fees are going to be raised by the, pr the people who are going to want to do the, the job. Because for them, not us, we're going to only provide the fields. Mm -hmm. But they're going to be running the programs. So they're going to have to be doing, they're going to be charging. But, and but if you're, Madam Mayor, um, if you're asking us to, to go out for an RFP so that we're getting apples to apples so you can compare. Yeah. Um, you know, my we would put in that RFP. You know, the sort of Absolutely. assumptions on absolutely being that's why I asked the question: What is the net that we want to make? And I haven't heard a response to that yet. I, I have not I heard wanna, a response yet, I don't and that's where I'm trying to go. What's your number? You're asking for it. Why would you? Are you ready to share that with us? Well, Steve, right now we have. We, we make uh, a profit of 12, right? 6 to 12, depending on what the, the final number ends up being. Yeah. To go through this whole exercise just seems to me, if we're not going to make double that, whether that's 25,000, why are we going through it? Just philosophically to to outsource and and perhaps lose the quality 
perhaps you're making an assumption that, <laughs> well, that, that I don't the know. next provider would I, not I, provide the same quality that the city provides. I mean, I, I think that's a, a fear and it's a concern. Well, but it's, it's a not concern a, that I'm hearing from everybody and, and, and the heads that are sure, nodding. But and it's everything. not an outcome that's predetermined. Yeah. That's the same concerns that were brought up with the, the youth. No, we heard no, it from no, 75 No, 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 no. It was an entirely no. different voice yeah. out there. Oh, I heard. Just go back and watch the, uh, it was refresh yourself on the videos. Difficult. It started with the fact that we had youth who were getting counseling from people who were not, who were putting the city at risk. Yeah, that That's wasn't. where it started, and the fact that there were so few, the numbers, you can go back in the monitor. Oh, I know the numbers course. were small, yes. The numbers was, were going hmm? down. And, and there were so few. And so those two things, that was broken. Mm -hmm. This is not broken. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, there, was, there was a lot of concerns about and, whether and the, the, the existing yeah, model I, would I, continue and that they would well, still have we, the same and those were all quality and freedom. But and those followed on, mm -hmm. those first two very important questions that actually started the whole discussion. Those were the fundamentals. Actually, the, the discussion was started by me, and it was, in, oh, it was inviting back. the it Boys the, and Girls Club to take over the program. It started back at the all-day program. program session, the first one I attended. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> that was, all right, we're going to, I started I, that one, so Mary I, had I called the question, and, and then I've listened, and I've listened to you, and you know I have great respect for the way that you look at things. But I just still, I just can't see that we're going to make um, a lot of money by outsourcing and um, having the possibility of losing the quality of the experience that our citizens continue to have at this point. So you're I don't think, that I don't think, I don't think, no, because you're predetermining I don't think, that we're, by going to an RFP, we're going to destroy the program. No, 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 no. We because haven't even made a decision whether we're even going to do it or not, because we don't have all the facts in front of us. That's what I'm disappointed about, that we're going to shut the door before we really actually take a deep dive further, so we can then have the discussion and make an educated, fully educated with all the numbers decision. I might make a decision to leave it in the city. Doubtful because it's a philosophical thing as much well, as it is yeah, dollars and cents. Yeah, it's philosophical for you, for business for me. Yeah, but it, it's business too. You know, I've been on this council for nine years. You know exactly how I've, mm -hmm. the position I've taken. I've never deviated from it. I've also voted in favor of investing a lot of money to make that field better, to bulldoze that existing building and replace it with a brand new one. I was a yay on that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not afraid of investing in our facilities. This is a philosophical about the programming and who's providing it. Steve, this is in your domain, yours and Terry's. So I know we can't be allocating staff hours to that this year. You might have to do it next year. It's already, you've got a full plate. Wait a minute. I ask a question. Um, I guess my response would be we'll, we'll, we'll fit it in. I mean, council gives us priorities and we fit things in. I think the other intangible we have not talked about is I, as your public works director, don't like to go into something to see results when it's going to have impacts on the people that work for me. That's right. And um, with all due respect, when I see a low-hanging fruit um, that I don't think from a big I think there are other areas we can look at long term, and as the budget yeah. comes up, I, I think yeah. staff is committed to what we can do. Um, we have some retirements coming up in the future, some other things that I think will prove more fruitful to the city from a cost saving standpoint. And to go through an RFP when we're not positive this is something that we want to do, that does have unintended consequences, unfortunately. Um, we have a recreation department staff who take a great deal of pride in what they do, mm -hmm. but the reality is in the economy we're in. Um, it, that's a challenge to us management-wise to keep people engaged and not looking elsewhere if they think that we're going to outsource their entire or that's a portion the other of their part department. that so I'm I'm I, so I, I would I'm tell fearful. you that's an intangible it's not a reason yeah. not to do something no but no it's something that needs to be factored in as we Absolutely. make a decision here because these are real people we're talking about here Absolutely. if we go to this next step and that's why staff has been very careful about going any further because we want to make sure we're serious about something like this because this is real people real jobs yeah. and um, I, I would leave it at that we will work the RFP and we do that all the time um, with projects, and we'll come up with a time frame for you 
and report back to you on, on that. And I think there are a lot of loose ends if we go down that path as to what mm -hmm. we need to set as the parameters to get apples to apples RFPs. I think that's yeah. very important. So. It is. Uh, Suzanne, I just, want to, I just want to say, real people, real jobs who are doing a fantastic job of yeah. what they're doing. Yeah, and that's and we've why. we've this over and over yeah. every email. Well, Mary called the question, and there were three, and the question is, we discontinue. Did you have something to say, Bill? Okay. We're moving on. Um, Madam Mayor, can I no do a further. little? No further. Madam Mayor, can I do a little time check, though? I, was, I, I know we're moving on. So um, we have three more items. Um, and I just wanted to check in with the council to, about your stamina, if you will, because um, we have staff waiting to, to address these items. And if we don't think we're going to get to, say, the, the, um, the last item, the legacy events, then I, because I know you like to, to end at I nine. I think the, leg the I well, not only that, the legacy event, it need, it's probably going to have a lot of discussion. So mm -hmm. would we like to delay that until the May work session? And yeah, so that to allow staff yeah. to go home that's waiting. Yeah. And I think uh, Mr. No, although Mr. Taylor, I know, yeah. loves to. I mean, hang and out that's going to have, and that's going, yeah, and um, that's going to uh, going to have a longer be discussion. Of his time as well. Yeah. So I would so, I would suggest uh, council that we we delay the okay. uh, the legacy ordinance, and uh, and move forward. Okay. All right. Um, then we'll bring that back to you in the the May um, work session, and uh, then we'll we'll I think um, Ryan and um, Steve handle the. Two and three, and I think three is time sensitive, and and two will make do as quickly as possible. So, Mr. Peter, three will be very quick too. That's so, yeah. Well, two, you, two, two might have some discussion, but my hope is that it's very short. short. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Appreciate that. Yep. Ready to go? Let's right. go. Okay. <laughs> uh, I will make this as uh, very quick as possible. I need to make two introductions. We have Scott Danielson, U.S. Bench President, is here. And we have Chad Deegan, the Operations Supervisor for MVTA, and they'll be here to answer any questions okay. you have on the issue. Uh, we're here. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you're alone. <laughs> all right. Um, do we want to get right to the point of... Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to skip everything I, I, I up think. to the point of... Um, <laughs> we, we have... Yeah. We basically have three options that we want to talk about uh, regarding bus benches and shelters. Right now, we allow 60 total shelters mm -hmm. and benches. We have 71 total in the city now, uh, as MVTA has placed them in county and state highway right-of-ways. So the three options are the most transit friendly option would be to allow a bus stop or a bus bench or, or a shelter at each one. There's 189 total stops in Burnsville. So that would mean we could potentially have much more crowded right of ways. That's the most transit friendly option. Option three is the other opposite, which would be keep it exactly as we have now, 60. That would result in the loss of 11 bus benches and would be the least transit friendly option. Um, and option two is somewhere between there. Uh, I can add two, I had an option two and then a sub option, which is uh, if we allow 60 benches and then as many shelters as MVTA wanted to put in, we would end up with the same amount of right away, would be more transit friendly. Um, then option one, obviously removing of facilities. And then 2A would be, let's say you're more comfortable with allowing 70 or 80 or 100 benches plus the amount of shelters that MVTA would offer. I spoke with Mr. Danielson before the meeting. He said if you were to allow 70 or 80 benches, they would likely provide that many. It, they likely wouldn't provide more than that. So basically the staff's uh, recommendation is the middle ground either allowing 60 benches plus as many shelters as MVTA desires yeah. or it, the sub option would be okay maybe you want a few more to get up to 70 or 80 but um, that way uh, they'd provide about half of them would have a service with a, a shelter or a bench and that's basically the gist of what we want to do uh, whatever we come back with we will uh, we would come back with an ordinance that's been revised with whatever you tell us tonight. Uh, the other item I'll hit on is they are coming up for relicensure at the end of June, and there will not be benches 
at non bus stop locations. That's what I wanted that. to get us yes. because so, I know there are benches yes, are that right. are just serving an advertising purpose and they are not bus stops. That's correct. So it's happened. And I want them all removed. Um, and so we, um, we worked with uh, MVTA and this, we have them all mapped out nicely now so we know exactly where there are stops yeah. and where there are benches and that's when we relicense no matter what we decide on the number we will be requiring that the ben that benches are only at stops so that much I you know, can assure you our licensing process will involve. Steve. Madam Mayor, real quickly to give the framework of this. Number one, when this ordinance was passed yes. many years ago, yes. transit was, was a different there. climate here in Burnsville. Yes. And I would say that transit, as our um, MBTA representatives, Councilmember Keeley, yourself, and most recently Councilmember Coughlin, and now Councilmember Wynn, <laughs> are aware transit is growing. Um, mm -hmm. MBTA is thriving. Yeah. Uh, we have the Orange Line coming to yeah. town. The demands for service are increasing, and with the Orange Line, that is going to drive additional demands on MBTA. So we see that growing. As the MBTA demands come, those are not a marketing tool. They're not advertising no. such as the benches are. They are for the customer and yeah. for the customer um, satisfaction end of things. So just to give the framework for the public so they understand, we do need to get our ordinance in line. The original ordinance many years ago, there's some confusing sections which account for why we don't have the exact numbers that were in the ordinance. But um, in this new transit climate, we do need to decide moving forward where do we want to be um, positioned and be able to work with our transit yeah. partners to get there. So. Yeah. As I read the background, and because I've gone through this twice, this ordinance, and with all the benches and so forth, um, I want to make sure that we're transit friendly, but I also want to make sure that we don't have benches in places that are not bus stops, and those benches only serve an advertising purpose, and not, a, mm -hmm. not a, for a bus stop. So when you're looking... One of the things I want to make sure is that when, do we know how many um, shelters, bus stop shelters MBTA is going to be uh, planning for each year in terms of their CIP for the city of Burnsville? I know because there's uh, so many um, cities that uh, MBTA is in, but how many do you have planned for Burnsville in an, in an X? Because that's one of the things I want to understand. Currently this year, we have three on Planned the for agenda. Burnsville. Yep, that have been uh, permits accepted. Um, each year, depending on budgets, um, you know, that's, that's what we have to work off of and as far as do we have money to purchase shelters and through permitting and contractors to pour bus pads. So um, specific um, numbers of shelters Beyond this, um, we haven't we haven't determined that, that you know that count yet. I think it might be good so we understand. And your your staff is recommending the um, the middle of the road, the maximum of 60 benches plus as many shelters. But mm -hmm. my hope is that as MBTA keeps moving up and adding more shelters, we remove the benches, so we stay yeah. at 60. Uh, well, Madam Mayor, I think that some of that bench problem came when MVTA changed their routes. So that's something, mm -hmm. am I right, Ryan? Yeah. And so that's something that I would, would want to be sure that somehow we work that out, that if they do change their routes, now I know that you're not likely to place a shelter in a spot where you're, you know, the route may be iffy. And, and I don't think the route changes have, have been very frequent. But... Uh, but if there's some way that, that we could ensure that when there is a route change that whoever has the bench in, in, in the old route area that that could come out, mm -hmm. that would help me. Two items. Uh, yeah. Through the use of GIS, we are now much, much yeah. more able to map them. I and, see and, it in the yeah. map that you and have. And what I can tell you is that when we come up for licensing every June, we will be reviewing those uh, with the bus bench, uh, with U.S. Bench and MVTA. So we'll do a better job of that. Okay. And then the other item that um, I just skipped through the most of the presentation, but is they went from a flag system. So what that meant mm -hmm. is the riders That's right. would, just flag, would just flag them. They'd have to be on the route, and the bus would stop yeah. as long as it was safe to stop there yeah. and pick them up. 
Now it's all dedicated bus stops. Yeah. So now we know yeah. where those stops are, and yeah. we can be sure that's where the benches mm -hmm. are. And that's ready. the reason why, Mary, I knew mm -hmm. it, because it was a flag stop rather than mm -hmm. a designated stop. Mm -hmm. But there were now, still benches. Yes. Not, where, not, not uh, because, the, it, yeah, there, there were benches were, all over the yeah. place. Mm -hmm. And they a lot were just, of those are and, gone now. But yeah, but because there was one time when they had it all up and down the uh, right of way on 42, yeah. and we knew that the buses didn't stop yeah. on 42. So they were all right. gone. I, I would support option two. two. Um, the sub-option has some interest because I do see that, or from my interest, and that is because I do re recognize there are more people using the buses. So uh, depending on how the other council members feel, I would mm -hmm. consider that. Mm -hmm. I'm pleased to say that I agree with Madam Mayor <laughs> and Council Member Sherry on this 100%. <laughs> Okay, I Susan. Agree also. Yeah, Option Dan. Concur. Yeah. We want to go with 60 total benches mm -hmm. and uh, the amount of shelters that in VTA. And clearly, the what I'm when, told, we, get them in say, the spot where the bus stops are. Yes, and 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 it's to say that if VTA decides to put a shelter where there is a bench, then the bench needs to go, and VTA has priority. That is written in there and will continue to be. Yeah. Yep. And that, that's never been an argument with U.S. Bench. They've always. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. And we're moving right now. Coming up, they have three going in that we'll be removing. Okay. Because I just want to make sure that that's intact. And council, I would add, yeah, we look at this as a living situation now and versus the past when it was. That's good. We did it, and we just went ten years. You're about to embark on your comprehensive plan, mm -hmm. and the comprehensive plan update is going to include one of the areas that we are going to spend quite a bit of effort on is transit, and yeah. how is Burnsville going to be served by transit in the future, and so we'll work with MVTA and our partners, and I think we'll have a better handle on what the end game potentially is on shelters. The county is studying 42 mm -hmm. as an east-west study all the way to Scott County, yeah. and so we'll have a better handle on what that potential is, and we can make adjustments as necessary. We want to get ourselves into compliance now, know the direction you want to see us enforce, and then yeah. we can tweak it if we need to. So. Okay. The other thing is that, and I haven't uh, had any complaints of late, but also, Mr. Daniels, um, making sure that it's picked up <laughs> and there's not a lot of trash around it. Yeah, we have, as I talked to Mr. Yeah. We do have routes to go on pick it up. And some benches have more garbage. Yeah, can you come? Yeah. Just so that right uh, our. Table. All right. right. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. way we can pick it up for the TV. Sure. Scott Danielson, U.S. Bench, 3300 Snelling Avenue, Minneapolis. Yes, we do have routes that go around to pick up garbage. Burns is actually pretty good as far as cities goes by not having a lot of garbage. Yeah. Um, but we do have routes, they go around to pick it up. Um, we can double check even more. If there's ever an issue, all they do is staff has to call at any time we can come. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as the bus stop benches, also, that it was a change when it was a flag. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there is some that are not on routes. We have a couple of them we have to mm -hmm. adjust, and we will work with, because each year you get a list of where they are. So we'll, yep. with this new stop system is great. That really helps, because everyone knows we're clear where they are. So yeah. it works out just fine. Okay, good. Because that was my other yes. concern. No, I agree. Make okay. sure that it's picked up yep. around. Okay. We do have one or two stops that are what I call ongoing, and it's because they're used so heavily. Mm -hmm. That's the issue. And so we will yeah. be reaching it's on out. The parkway on five, yes, where that, I get the most. That's probably ground zero for garbage issues. Yeah. And yeah. so that's we will where be I reaching out to calls. MBTA. And MBTA had looked at potentially putting a shelter in that location, which would have a trash container. Yeah. However, the right of way in that area may not lend itself to that. So we'll work with both entities to try to come up with a, mm -hmm. a plan that works there because we have in the spring we always receive complaints about it too it's just because yeah. the winter garbage gets yeah. under the snow and stuff so yeah the parkway close to five is one that I get a lot of complaints mm -hmm. about and then as you come to uh, east on the parkway it's uh, there's a bench right by the gas station at Aldridge mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. that's okay. the other one yeah. mm -hmm. that I get complaints yeah. so we'll work with our part yeah I, yeah. would, I would tell you <laughs> So this. you got them too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> and by yeah. the way, I do want to yeah. thank as long as we're talking about this, there was a uh, citizen who who approached me on that one for moving that that uh, bus stop and that that is great. It's a much safer uh, way for people to cross mm -hmm. from the apartments across uh, Parkway and uh, that was a really good move. Thank you very much for yeah. all of that. There's another one that I've gotten uh, because there isn't a bench and there isn't a shelter. And it's on Portland and uh, Traveler's Trail. 
You're saying it's this is stop. where you like one? Huh? This is where you would like a shelter? Or well, or is that I, I, I'd like to find out because there's always people standing there because of all of those um, there are a lot of apartments and businesses, and businesses. Yeah. so it's right there on Portland and Travelers Trail, and it's just to the east of Portland. All right. We'll take a it's look a, at it. the yeah. old Skyline building. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I, I've gotten a couple of phone calls about that and directed it to MVTA. But, yeah, and well, you we have We two. have a couple of benches to move, so, <laughs> <laughs> so we will uh, prioritize uh, that one. Yeah, because that's one where there's a lot of folks who are catching the bus there, mm -hmm. but there, there's no bench or shelter. Okay. Okay. Anything else, everybody? Okay, it's clear? It's clear, and we'll be back to you with Norton's amendment. Yeah, okay, and uh, we're going with your recommendation. We love that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Oh, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. The next item, um, Steve. I think it's yours. Yes, I should move. Yeah. Solicitation. Yeah. Madam Mayor, members of the council, I will expedite this one. It is somewhat informational, but we are looking mm -hmm. for some direction. Um, as, you, as some of you may be aware, um, every two years the region solicits uh, projects for federal funding um, in the region. And why this is important, we have paid for some pretty substantial projects. Most okay. recently, 13 and 5 received a substantial yeah. amount of federal dollars. Um, the Black Dog Trail was built almost exclusively. 80% of that is federal dollars. And so federal dollars can be uh, a large part of our projects and moving projects forward. That being said, we want to be selective and make sure these are projects that we need uh, moving forward because when we do add things, there's a tail with all of those things. There's mm -hmm. a maintenance tail, there's a reconstruction mm -hmm. tail, there are all of those things. So um, staff has reviewed our CIP, and I, and I guess I would be remiss in not mentioning we did receive $1.9 million for a project coming up in 2019, the Lake Marion South Trailway, and that's all part of the Dakota County Trail System. Those are plan trail improvements. We have a partner on that that does share in the maintenance costs and those things also. So, um, so we've, we've been very successful in those types of grant applications. Um, as you know, we're in the process of redoing our comprehensive plan. Um, from a trail park standpoint, we think that it makes sense to not push forward with any additional trails until we've completed that park comprehensive plan because we think the council is going to want to take a good hard look at where do we want additions and where do we not with with the cost in mind long term we look at our facilities maintenance and all the stuff we have to take care of we want to make sure those are trails that you want to see long term before we go for any additional trail money in, the, in those areas uh, and so with that in mind we don't have any road projects that meet the criteria we do have one project that mm -hmm. is a need in town, and this gets back to our last transit conversation. I think you'll remember in 2014. Well, we've been talking about yeah. this for a couple of years. This one's been around for a while at the corner. We would be talking yeah. about the northeast corner of Cliff and 13. 13. One of the busiest uh, transit sh um, shelters mm -hmm. in Burnsville is at that mm -hmm. location. Uh, we don't have any sidewalk on mm -hmm. what would be the north side of Cliff heading yep. into Egan. Egan mm -hmm. has extended trail all the way to the city limits, and then we don't. If you drive that area, you'll see yep. a Warren Goat path along there where all the residents yep. in that area walk down to the transit shelter. And we have been monitoring this. Originally, it would, the transit use was light. Um, the transit use continues to grow in that area. Uh, so that is an area where we at least would like to evaluate whether it would make sense for the city to look at federal funding. And the reason I say that is um, federal funding pays for up to 80%. So in mm -hmm. the case of that area, if we were to do a five-foot sidewalk, which might not be eligible for federal funding and the city and county paid for it, the city would be on the hook for maybe $80,000. If we were to do a 10-foot trail, which yeah. the federal funds would help for, we might actually be on the hook for less money less. <laughs> because the federal funds would pick up the cost, substantial amount of the cost. So we want to evaluate what potentially the best options would be for Burnsville. It may in the end be a sidewalk. We might look at a sidewalk with that is federally eligible, though, to see if that made some sense. Um, so we're recommending that the, the council authorize staff to, number one, take a further look at that sidewalk section and see if it makes sense. Um, and then number two, if it does make sense, make the application for federal funding. Doesn't mean we're going to get federal funding, but apply for it. Now, the other thing to remember is we are talking five plus years in advance. Um, mm -hmm. One of the problems with federal funding is 
the, the money is awarded five years before the projects actually happen. And so you really have to put on your crystal mm -hmm. ball and look for things that you really think are going to be needed before you um, go for it because, again, it's, we're talking about 2020 and 2021. And so I think if we envision where we're going to be transit-wise by then and we see the walkers we have now, um, this, this, is, this makes sense to at least look into. Um, MBTA has contacted us every year about this. It's a, it's a high priority for them. I think the other thing it will allow us to do is maybe leverage that discussion with MBTA about their level of partnership in this and if they can mm -hmm. provide some assistance also in addition to the county. So with that, tonight what staff is asking for is um, just direction from the council to at least pursue this, see if it's a, a legitimate um, candidate to be applied for, and then if it is, uh, make the application because that has to be done here in May uh, coming up. So we don't have a lot of time, again, for something that might not be built for 2020, 2021. Then, we'll, then we will be able to look at our CIP this fall. Um, we won't actually know until probably early next year whether we were to get the money, but we can put a placeholder in the CIP for that project and look at what our options are. And so with that, I would take any questions that the council has. Well, we've been talking about it for a long time, and it is continue, continues to be uh, a place where there are a lot of stops, especially when you look at the apartments, and there is no safe way to get to that bus stop. We do have two schools along that corridor. We have a junior right. high on the south side yeah. and an elementary school on the north yeah. side. So, so I, I think the worn path speaks for itself. Yeah, and I would you like know, to see yeah, us look at that 10-foot because then you can get equipment also yep. for snow removal. But only 10 feet. Well, uh, would get the federal money. Yes. Yeah. Well, oh, we don't know yet. We're, yeah. we're going to we look. There may yeah. be some sidewalk options that would be federally yeah. eligible. So that's um, what he was saying. The, we have to look deeper into it. There may be some, um, I think you all know, right-of-way is a sore spot with the county and the city lately. So we, we would like to do something that doesn't require right-of-way acquisition, <laughs> to be honest with you. I'm not inclined at this time. So we're going to look at our full breadth of options, and, and okay. we would decide what makes sense for the city. Um, but mm -hmm. in order to do that, we need to get your approval okay. to move forward and take a look at that. Well... I think it's, yeah, okay. Dan? Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Okay, thank Move you. forward. Okay, you got all. Very good. All right, and then uh, now we'll go to roundtable because uh, we'll take a look at the uh, sign ordinance for legacy events next month. Okay, Bill, you have anything? No, but I'd just like to thank my fellow council members for a great discussion tonight, and thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, I learned a lot. And it was a tough one, and uh, I think it's a very tough issue, yeah. and thank you very much. Okay. Mary? I have nothing to report. Okay. Dan? Uh, nothing. Fire muster is Thursday night, so uh, okay. the way the calendar worked out, this one uh, is coming after work session, and today's uh, foundation meeting was impossible for me to get to because yeah. of uh, support at work is gone for the next week and a half, and it was a long, heavy day to get ready for that. <laughs> Okay. My, my uh, assistant is on vacation, and oh dear, so I couldn't uh, peel away at 4:30 to go to the meeting. So. Well, you've been having some very tough days yeah. at work, and personally, so Thanks. know that we understand that. Suzanne, just uh, from MBTA, um, we have a new executive director, Luther mm -hmm. Winder, and he begins on April 4th. Okay. That was it. Very good. And I do want to thank everybody. It's a tough decision to go down the road with the, but it was a good open discussion. Uh, I have nothing to report because our, now our Convention and Visitors Bureau meeting have changed to Tuesdays, and now it's the next one. But uh, the one that we had before, um, our revenues continue to be strong, and we're continuing to work on uh, driving traffic to Burnsville. One, the Minnesota Traveler, uh, we've done that. We also are taking a survey with, and partnering with the University of Minnesota to do a survey in terms of who visits Burnsville and, and uh, how we can target very. And then the other is that we're working with, the, um, with Bonnie Featherstone and the artist to uh, bring uh, a new art uh, event to Burnsville, and that's going very well. And with that, we're hoping that we could purchase one of the um, art pieces that we could then 
use for postcards mm -hmm. and uh, note mm -hmm. cards and things that would uh, elevate the brand and what Burnsville is all about. But the choices uh, that the artists have looked at is uh, in terms of places in Burnsville. Um, the Kramer Mining, Buck Hill, um, XL Black Dog Plant, and there's one more, and it's not coming up in my, but I'll let you all know later. But that's, that's it. And then, um, I think that's all. Metro Cities, we haven't started any of that. Okay, and then of course uh, with MLC, it's a quarterly meeting, so you've already heard about that. Uh, Madam Mayor, you wanted to talk about yes. the teacher's proclamation? Yes, okay. and uh, was, Michelle sent you a mm -hmm. request that I received, and uh, mm -hmm. it's about, they've <laughs> never done anything about uh, teachers, but uh, there is a request for us to do a proclamation honoring teachers. Yeah, I know with you working in a school <laughs> district. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Dan, do you have any? Does it fit within our proclamation policy? Yeah. Yeah, but I come to you because we haven't. Point. Yeah. If you all say yes, then yeah. 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 I think we had, didn't we set apart well, some we time did. ago. We we put in place a policy so it fits yeah. with that. I don't have any problem with it if it's outside of that and we're asking for a special authorization. Then I. Yeah. Okay. N not with this particular. No, it's a. Within, it's within. It's within the scope it's, of our current policy. Okay. It is within the scope, but we've not done it before with regard for teachers, and that's why I wanted to bring it to you. Okay. Just so you know. I think it's uh, a great adventure. Okay, Mary. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Then, then we'll get that done. All right. Thank you. Um, with that, Heather. Anything else? Nothing else, then, Mary. Okay, Michelle. Okay. Nothing. Okay, you're, you're going to uh, probably send us some dates about commission interviews later on? Yes, that will be, uh, commission interviews will be um, usually there mid to late May. Yeah. So I will get back to you probably. Yeah, because we have to look at all of that. Yeah. We have to wait until after that, that first week of May till we get all the applications in and we know how many we're going to have. And then we'll be yeah. able to schedule Okay, then, time. then we'll just talk about that later. Okay, if there's nothing else, we stand adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.